Hey everybody, JJ here with ASUS and excited to kick off this live stream and talk about ASUS ROG's wireless lineup for 2021. Uh, we've been working really hard on this extensive lineup now that we have really for our peripherals. Uh, this is gonna include everything from, of course, mice to headsets to keyboards. And I think that for a lot of you, if you've been looking to be able to upgrade to a wireless uh, peripheral, whether it's gonna again be a mouse, a keyboard or a headset, I think we're definitely gonna have some really great options for you. Really be able to show you something that I think offers not only a great level of functionality and feature set, but of course has that ROG stylized design aesthetic and also, offer some pretty cool features and functionality for a wide respective uh, set of the different types of products that we're gonna be talking about. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and break things up in this stream to be able to dive into first and foremost, the mice. Uh, we'll then jump into the keyboards. And then lastly, we'll go ahead and touch on the headsets. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments or feedback or anything along those lines, uh, feel free to go ahead and just uh, chime in and let me know. Uh, hey, uh, Parajump Gaming, uh, welcome. Michael, also thanks for joining us here on the stream. As always, it's appreciated, guys. So um, this is going to pretty much cover the majority of just our wireless series products. So for those of you that might be interested in terms of specifically wired-based accessories, keep in mind that uh, for a vast majority of these auditor, uh, these uh, products, they are going to be both wired and wireless. Uh, hey, Dave, in terms of anything related to monitors, feel free to go ahead and drop a question. I'll go ahead and try to follow up uh, later, uh, post the actual stream in the comments, or make sure to check out our PCDIY weekly live stream, which is normally on Fridays, uh, where we actually cover uh, new product announcements, general Q&A for any one of the products that we've gone ahead and announced or that we uh, have gone ahead and released. Uh, or, of course, we have our PCDIY group uh, where you can feel free to tag me every day and we talk about all our entire range of hardware, whether it's uh, something that's recently come out, something that's been announced, or you know uh, something that might be, be, be a little bit farther out depending on whether it was uh, kind of like maybe a a precursory announcement for a product line or something along those lines. Uh, that would include definitely monitors like the PG32 UQ, where we do have a product release calendar. So if you're definitely interested in that, make sure to go ahead and check out our PCDIY group. Uh, and you can also check out our corresponding uh, tracker uh, calendar, which I go ahead and update about every seven to 10 days and will give you visibility in terms of any products that we've gone ahead and announced and haven't yet released. Now, the cool thing uh, that we have going on in terms of all the peripherals that we're going to be talking about today, pretty much all of them have formally launched. So you won't have to worry about kind of waiting for one of these products to come out. The exception pretty much to the entirety of this lineup is going to be the ROG Spot the X, which is right now available as a pre-order product at some e-tailers, but you should see it become available towards the end of this month and as we move into September. Uh, beyond that, pretty much every other product has gone ahead and shipped out in terms of the channel. So you'll definitely start to find them uh, across a wide range of e-tailers. Uh, we also are really excited to let you guys know that if you do want to order anything right now from the Asus e-store, we do actually have a promo going on, I believe, until the 20th. And that is going to be uh, ROG 10 wireless. And so that will go ahead and give you actually a promo discount uh, for pretty much any one of the products that we're talking about. So that's a pretty cool promotion that we have going on. So uh, let me go ahead and get ready to jump into this, guys, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay. So uh, first and foremost, I think the first uh, actual mouse that we're going to go ahead and talk about is going to be the uh, Kiris. I've got a lot of boxes here. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so it's going to be uh, this guy right here. Uh, so... The Keras was actually a really cool design for us because this was um, an actual keyboard where really kind of the focus was to be able to offer something that was super lightweight. Um, what we see definitely amongst the community is that there's a lot of kind of interest, I think, amongst uh, gamers to be able to have kind of lighter weight mice, although we definitely still see that there's a huge number of traditional gamers. And we're not talking about generally just quote unquote esports professionals, where sometimes that's a lot of the discussion. A lot of our product, um, when we design and develop, and of course, we're collaborating and working really closely with a lot of esport professionals. Professionals, but kind of the, the focus that an esport professional might want is going to be sometimes a little bit different than a general kind of gamer um, in terms of not only the look, the feel, um, but the functionality and the overall experience that they're looking for. Things for uh, take, for instance, like many of our mice that offer tri mode connectivity. That means that you have USB C, you have 2.4 gigahertz, and you have Bluetooth connectivity. For a professional kind of in the esport segment, they don't need that, but a general user can appreciate hey, I can use this from everything, let's say, like on a laptop, I can switch it to maybe even using it on a tablet, and then I can use it on my desktop and having that kind of flexibility is pretty cool. Um, so those are kind of some of the key differences that when we go about the design and development, we do have to kind of be conscientious of, um, I think, our real world users and not quote unquote, just kind of like an esport professional. Um, but 
with this model, we did definitely kind of focus on wanting to have something that uh, was uh, ultra lightweight in terms of its actual target, but we also wanted the actual design to be a little bit different than the norm. So it's actually uh, this mouse right here. So let me go ahead and uh, take the cable off and we'll actually show you some closer shots here in a moment. And uh, it's, it's very compact. If we actually go ahead and compare this to, let's say, uh, very popular mouse, this is our original Gladius. You'll actually see that it is gonna be a, a bit more compact. It is gonna be smaller in terms of its overall footprint. And it's definitely gonna be overall lighter in terms of its overall weight. Now it's not as, as lightweight as what we're gonna have with the wired version, just because you also have to account for, let's say the battery, but this is 79 grams. So it's quite a lightweight mouse. Um, very nice in terms of that regard. So let me go ahead and uh, show you guys a little bit of a closer shot and we'll dive into some of the kind of the cool uh, features and functions right here. And uh, give me just a general kind of photo so you guys can see what it looks like here. So there you guys can see it kind of side by side. And we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit closer now. So give me a second here and uh, we'll get it in there in this shot. And so here you can see it's a uh, quite compact in terms of the design. Uh, finish is really clean. It uses a new kind of uh, semi-translucent material that we have right here. And I'll go ahead and connect it so you can see the RGB lighting on here. But one of the immediate kind of distinguishing points is that on this model, let's say compared to the Gladius 3, which is another model that we'll be taking a look at a little bit later, is that here um, we decided to go ahead and implement PBT uh, for the actual buttons. Now these are fully independent. This is kind of a hallmark of really all ROG mice and that helps to minimize any type of false depressions. That essentially means that when this actually molding is extruded, this is an individual piece and this is an individual piece. We also have something pretty cool called our zero gap design. And when we take a closer look at actual the way that the switch works um, within the mouse, what you'll find is actually that allows us to have better click response latency um, and overall better actuation of the actual mouse switch itself. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar, essentially these are different types of mouse switches. These are micro switches. And when you go to actually press uh, a micro switch, you'll see right there, if we can focus in on that, that right there, is gonna be the point of contact. And when you click that, that's actually uh, what then passes through the signal, uh, through the actual push pin based interface, and that's what causes everything. And in most traditional mice, there's actually going to be a gap between the essentially the internal mechanism that is used within the actual button. And that actually can cause a little bit of additional delay. And this is part of what's called debounce delay. The same thing happens kind of in keyboards and mice, but it's pretty cool that we've essentially gone ahead and improved both the inside of the design mechanism, as well as giving you that more texture that we have here on this model. Um, you can see on the sides right here, of course, you've got your two uh, switches right there. These are customizable. So uh, you do have essentially the default, which is in black. Then there's also gray and pink. So you can go ahead and change things up right there. Uh, that's your, of course, your scroll wheel, nice, clean, consistent scroll wheel. That's USB-C for the connectivity right there. On the base, you'll see that this is full 100% PTFE uh, feet. These are Omni feet designed. So really designed for smooth, responsive uh, tracking across eight directions. We actually did a lot of testing against other mice that are in the marketplace to really be able to feel confident in the performance. Um, you actually have hardware level DPI adjustment. So that means you can just click this button and you can ship between four different DPIs without actually toggling out into the Armor Crate software if you don't want to do that. Uh, pairing for, let's say, going into Bluetooth mode. And then from there, you also have the wireless. So if we uh, switch that on, you'll see right there, we now have the RGB mode that's enabled. And you can see you have that lighting zone right there. And then you also have the lighting zone right there. And in case you're wondering where the uh, wireless is stored, there's an onboard magnetic dock. So you can see right there, pretty cool, just slides in and you can remove it in and out. So very, very easy to work with, okay? And of course, with that USB-C cable, this is the ROG Paracord cable. This is new for this uh, kind of new generation in 2021. Ultra lightweight cable that we have. It's got built-in strain relief, so you don't have to kind of worry about the actual cable getting fatigue. And that's on both sides on the USB-C connection 
as well as on the USB-A connection. And you can see right there, just with the USB-C, if you want to go ahead and go into wired mode, you're good to go. So very, very clean, very, very simple, really nice uh, in terms of the overall design. And that's going to be pretty much this model. And we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at some of the other cool design elements on this model. So let me go ahead and uh, remove this first. And we're going to now take actually a closer look at something. So uh, for many of you, you might be familiar that a kind of a hallmark, if we go even all the way back to kind of our original mice uh, with something like the original Gladius one right here, is that uh, we really were kind of the only manufacturer on the market to kind of really look at the community and see that there was kind of a demand to not only be able to customize the actual click experience, but be able to maintain flexibility in terms of uh, repairing uh, your mouse if let's say the actual micro switches uh, were beginning to fail or they were getting a little bit kind of gummy or inconsistent, or ultimately you just wanted to maybe be able to uh, customize it for your overall experience. And this is what brought about what we call our push fit socket based design. Um, and so the cool thing about the push fit uh, socket based design is going to be that it allows you to go ahead and customize this. And new for pretty much all of our uh, current mice that we're going to be talking to you about is, is that you have the flexibility to go ahead and jump in and customize this. So you'll see that there's essentially two little areas that are right here. And these are small little rubber grommets. We're going to remove these rubber grommets and actually show you what it looked like on the inside. Okay. So if we switch back over here to our cam, you'll see right there that we've got these two rubber grommets. And you essentially just need to remove those. So uh, you can remove them through, you know, whatever is kind of easiest to you. If you've got like a, you know, um, a small flathead screwdriver, you've got a knife, a utility knife, whatever you want. Uh, you got kind of different options right there. But let me go ahead and just show you what that looks like. So you can see right there, just remove the grommet. And then you're going to see that there's a screw, right? Very, very simple. So let me go ahead and just uh, remove the other one. And then I will go ahead and show you how you can go ahead and customize things. So we're going to switch back over there, guys. And you're going to want a precision tip screwdriver. OK. And keep in mind, this push fit socket design that we're going to be talking about is really going to be a hallmark across pretty much all the mice that we're going to be touching on. So. Um, while we're kind of spending a little bit of time here to focus in on it as we move through the other mice in the stream, uh, you won't necessarily have to kind of worry about that uh, as far as kind of wondering about does that mouse have that or, you know, does it not feature it, right? So once you've gone ahead and removed those two screws, just want to separate those two screws. And then I've gone ahead and just pulled that off. And there you go. You can now see that you've got the body right there. It's fully accessible. And you can see that we've got our ROG micro switches. Now, these are brand new in-house based micro switches. They're rated for 70 million clicks. They have an actual um, electro gold plating contact at the junction terminal, which helps to reduce oxidation and helps to provide better performance. But if, let's say, you want to go ahead and swap things out, you could literally pull out that micro switch right there. Maybe you want to try something a little bit different. Then you could pop in another switch. And there you go. It's that simple. So pretty straightforward. In a moment, guys, I'll definitely take a look through. Uh, if there, anybody's got any kind of questions, it might be kind of coming up in the stream. Uh, but if you see right there, we've gone ahead and now swapped out the switch. And then from there, you would just put uh, your shell back on. Put your two screws back in place, right? And then put your two uh, grommets back in place, and you're good to go. And now you've gone ahead and customized uh, the actual switch on the mouse. Now, that's not something you necessarily have to do with the ROG micro switches, just because of their really kind of premium quality and their performance. It's not something that you kind of have to be concerned with. So let me go ahead and actually show you a little bit of a closer look at some of these. Um, kind of micro switches so you can kind of see exactly kind of the inside and some of the cool kind of elements that we have going on here Okay, here we go So I'm just gonna put this one back in place And you're good to go now 
when you go about uh, changing this too, some people kind of wonder about, well, what is kind of the benefit of changing out the switch? And, uh, you know, it's very similar to kind of keycaps uh, that you have on a keyboard. Sometimes it can be when it comes down to a preference in terms of the actual actuation, how kind of stiff it is, as opposed to kind of um, how smooth and kind of ease, easy it might be to kind of click through. Some people, if you've got a little bit kind of heavier hand, maybe you want to have a little bit more resistance. Other people, if you're kind of really looking for something super s quick, then you have that available to you. Um, really kind of with the ROG micro switch, we really tried to nail kind of that balance of really offering you crisp, clear, consistent um, depressions. And so I think for a lot of people, they're really going to like them. Um, but, you know, ultimately the cool thing is that you can go ahead and customize it. And you can see right there, I've gone ahead and now got my mouse reassembled and I'm good to go. So if we take a look at the inside right here, you'll see this is the actual ROG micro switch up close. It's actually got a cool little ROG transparent housing in it and it's red. Uh, you can actually just see for some comparison, these are all three pin standard um, micro switches. So there is a lot of different options. We have done validation with a, a few different Omron um, switches that you can go ahead and have guaranteed interoperability compatibility with, but there are quite a number of switches that are out there on the market. And we'll talk talking a little bit later with the Gladius 3, which is actually the world's first mount that supports both mechanical and optical micro switches. So three pin and five pin, and you can actually change between the two if that's something that you're looking for. So uh, if you're looking for even more flexibility, then um, that is kind of a cool design element that is going to be on the Gladius 3, but not, not this uh, Keras model right here. Okay, um, so there you can just kind of see the switch. Overall, pretty cool looking, but we want to actually now go a little bit deeper in uh, to the switch design itself. So let me go ahead and uh, bring up an actual little bit of a closer look here at the inside of the switch design itself. And then we're going to actually take a look at the mechanism itself. And the reason why it is important that we kind of take a look at this is because on our highest end mice that feature the essentially the ROG micro switch, um, as I noted on the inside, there's an actually uh, electro uh, uh, plating that's done in gold and that's to reduce essentially oxidation because essentially there can be buildup of kind of dust, debris, dander, um, sweat, humidity that can actually affect the internal um, junction layer and that can actually cause wear and damage over time. When you take actually a closer look right here, you'll see that this is the inside of the micro switch itself. So this allows it to have kind of really high performance here. You can actually see the gold plating, um, but this is what the inside of your actual switch looks like. And you can see here it's actually installed. And when you go ahead and make that depression, you can see the entire actually mechanism, how it works. Um, we can actually take a little bit of you know, a closer look at this and a little bit of a video um, so that you kind of have a sense in terms of how this actually all comes together. So let me go ahead and load that up. And in case anybody has any questions while that's uh, loading up there, I will go ahead and uh, take a look here. Looks like there's definitely quite a bit of discussion regarding some monitors. Uh, like I said, this this stream we're going to be focusing definitely on our peripherals. But you know, if you definitely have any kind of questions uh, regarding anything that we're talking about on this side of the fence, feel free to go ahead and jump in and uh, you know ask uh, away on regarding pretty much any one of the wireless kind of products that we're going to be talking about. So no worries right there. Always happy to be able to kind of try to uh, answer anybody's questions. Hey Derek, happy to have you here. Uh, hey, Jonathan, so Jonathan asks, are the switches compatible with our, the, our, the ROG line, including the Chakra and the Spatha? So that's a great question. So pretty much if you see a mouse and it says that it has the push fit socket design, then that means that that customization experience that we're talking about is going to be present. And that's pretty much any one of the mice that we have right now within the lineup. So if it says push fit socket design, that means you can take any one of the standard micro switches and you can go ahead and dive into it. Uh, when we get to the Gladius 3 though, as I noted, that one is special in terms that it's a push fit socket 2 design, which allows it to support optical micro switches, which is a five pin along with a three pin based interface, okay? Um, hey, Randy, so we'll actually be talking about the little bit of Claymore 2 when we get to actually our, our wireless keyboards. Um, but as of right now, um, still actually kind of tentative. We've passed along our feedback to our product management team for those that are kind of interested in uh, customizable kind of keycaps uh, for our RX-based switches as they utilize 
a different type of stem and housing design. Um, so as of right now, they're still only coming with the Accenture keycaps that come with those keyboards, uh, but we're gonna continue to collect feedback from the community. And if that's something you guys wanna see, we definitely wanna continue to hear that feedback. So uh, if we dive it close a little bit, a little bit uh, closer in here, we can actually see the mechanism kind of um, in motion. So you can actually see what it looks like right there. And um, I think I've got one other, little bit of a closer look here to show um, the actual depression mechanism. And the other kind of cool thing that we've done here with the ROG micro switch is that traditionally, uh, when you talk about kind of your switches, right, all your mice are gonna have essentially two switches, right? When they have the ROG micro switch, like the Gladius 3 and the Keras and the uh, Spotha X and any one of the new mice that feature these, is that we've actually also gone ahead and done tighter uh, binning and essentially uh, tolerance. So there's something that's called the gram force deviation. And so essentially that means that if you take one switch and you were to test it, you'll actually find that there's a certain level of deviation or difference in terms of the actual consistency um, to the actuation performance between one switch and another switch. And this is just common just from the fact that you're mass producing something. Um, so the overall kind of relative um, tolerances are already pretty, pretty tight in the industry. But the cool thing about the ROG micro switch is that it's even beyond the industry standard. So we actually are targeting um, only a deviance of 0.5 uh, versus uh, 10, uh, excuse me, um, 10 uh, that you would have for the industry standard. So it's essentially going to just offer you a more consistent experience when you go about clicking the mouse um, from the left and the right button. And so if you're somebody that's kind of very consistent, very precise, and you're looking for a more uniform experience, it's nice to know that those ROG micro switches not only provide that super high lifespan, that improved level of reliability, that great performance in terms of the zero click latency because of the improvement in terms of the internal design mechanism where the actual uh, button itself is making direct contact with the top of the plunger, um, all those things. But then you also talk about the consistency of the actual um, switches themselves. And that's something that, again, is kind of showing you that hallmark of that. When we talk about the design and development of our mice, we're really kind of taking a look at everything from the overall aesthetic design uh, to the performance, to the features and functionality and kind of the user experience. And so here's a little, you can see a little bit of a close up shot there. And you can see actually how that works. It's pretty cool when you take a, a closer look up at it there. Hey, Shadow, if you've got feedback, uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, join our uh, PCDIY group if it's specific to our components. I'm pretty much active there every day and love to kind of monitor uh, feedback. I will kind of note there that there's a lot of kind of design thinking and things that we already do that some users aren't kind of aware of. And, um, you know, sometimes you might be able to provide insight and kind of better understand that your feedback may make sense. It may, may not sense relative to kind of the entirety of all users. And that's the important thing is that when we balance feedback, we always want to be mindful that we appreciate everybody's feedback. Um, but even take, for instance, like a uh, take for instance, something like a mouse, you know, we went through over 20 different design iterations with this, with different types of molds and uh, different types of kind of design elements that were refined. And it can be very difficult to kind of make every single user happy when it comes to, let's say, the design, the weight and the shape. And that's the reason why you release multiple products. And similarly, this is similar to kind of what we do with an monitors and motherboards, graphics cards, and many different product lines, right? Is that resonant to the kind of the features, the functionality, the price point, um, the aesthetic design. There's a lot of attributes that go into kind of helping to curb, um, you know, or enhance the feature set and the functionality and specification of one product more so than another. Um, but definitely feel free to go ahead and drop in your feedback there. We have multiple polls and announcement sections that I've done um, that correlate to different types of products and looking for feedback and things along those lines. Um, so uh, hopefully that answers your question. All right, um, so let me go ahead and just, uh, again, kind of show through a little bit of the kind of last run through here in terms of uh, the Keras, and we will get ready to jump into our next model, okay? So um, one second here, guys. There we go. And uh, we will also go ahead and just kind of show you a, little, a couple of the kind of general close-up images. I mean, we did a pretty good kind of job there to kind of show, I think, everything off pretty clearly. So again, to kind of recap, uh, when you get this model right here, you're gonna get the mouse, right? And again, remember, this is a wireless mouse. 
uh, tri mode. So it's going to have the 2.4 gigahertz. It's going to have the Bluetooth, and it's going to have the USB-C connectivity. You get the ROG paracord cable. Um, even this cable, you might think, is kind of not a big deal, but we actually spent a huge amount of design and effort actually have to have a specialized machine that actually tested um, the tensile strength as well as the actual um, weight. And we did quite a bit of actually analysis to really be able to offer something that was smooth, um, essentially minimize any type of drag, was lightweight, but also still had good abrasion performance. So um, we're really, really uh, happy and really impressed with essentially what we have here with the RG paracord cable. But one thing I will note is that because um, pretty much all of our new types of products are focusing on USB-C, if you kind of want to get crazy and you want to get kind of customizable and kind of play around with things, the cool thing is with using a USB-C based interface, is that if you want to kind of customize and get a different type of cable, maybe to go with something a little bit different, um, you can go ahead and do that. So, you know, it's up to you. You know, maybe you want something that looks a little like this. Um, you know, maybe, like I said, something a little bit brighter. Entirely kind of up to you. Um, it's cool to be able to have kind of that level of flexibility, right? Um, and let me actually just show you here the swappable side caps. So you guys can see a little bit of a closer look at that. And I will also show you uh, one other accessory that comes included inside with this model. So we're going to head back over here. So when I was talking about right there, you get that a little bit tighter there. There you go. So you can see these. Very easy to go ahead and customize these. You can pretty much just pull them out. They're magnetic. And then you have essentially another two sets right there. You have your gray set and you have your black set. You can go ahead and pull those out. The other really cool thing too about this is that um, at its, you know, its price point that it is, uh, which again, I'll bring that up for you guys in case anybody's wondering, uh, it is a $99 uh, for this model, is that uh, the cool thing uh, for this model is going to be that it also includes a, a replacement set of these 100% PTFE OmniFeet design. So sometimes if you have to replace these a little bit later on, you know, they're going to cost you a few dollars. It can be like 5 to $10, especially if you're getting like a high quality 100% PTFE. These are going to become included with the mouse, so you can swap those out. And then you also even have a secondary set right here of... Um, uh, Japanese Omron switches if you want to go ahead and swap those out along with some cool stickers. So there's a lot that comes bundled in. Effectively, you get, you know, this right here, you get your mouse, you get your paracord cable, you get your replacement feet, uh, you get your uh, secondary set of switches, and then you also have the customizable side um, uh, cover plates. All right, guys, and uh, here, just let me go ahead and um, I think it was pretty straightforward, right? That you guys could see everything there. But in case you wanted some close-up shots, right here, it's the body. And again, this model right here, uh, 79 grams is its weight. And there on that side, it's got a nice little bit of grip te texture, which is great. USB-C connection, and then everything there that comes inside the box. Okay. All right, guys, so uh, let me go ahead and just double check if there's any kind of questions there, and I, I will kind of continue on here. So let me get this backed up into the box right here. And the other uh, cool kind of thing, if you're wondering, is, is that also new for this generation is all of our new mice do also support Asus Aura Sync wirelessly. So in some of our first generation mice, uh, you only essentially had the Aura Sync compatibility when you were using it in the hardline connection. But now with the wireless, you can go ahead and complete Asus Aura Sync wirelessly as well. So that is up to you. And there is all multiple onboard memory profiles. So if you want to be able to go ahead and have different profiles, for different types of scenarios, you're going to entirely do that. So RG Karis, Chris, some different kind of pronunciations for a couple of different people, but uh, great option right here. So that covers us there. Uh, let me just lastly check any questions on this model. If not, we'll keep moving things along. And I will keep this out just as kind of a reference for our next model. 
Hey, um, so so one um, again, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, monitors, this is a stream that's focused on ROG wireless peripherals. Um, make sure to join a PCAOI group. We've got an updated calendar, which includes the PG3T UQ, including our target release date, as well as other monitors that we recently announced. Um, I also recommend checking out our weekly PCAOI um, stream, uh, which covers new product announcements, availability updates, and everything entirely to the ASUS uh, component uh, business group. So that's going to be monitors, graphics cards, motherboards, networking, peripherals, pretty much everything that happens to fall under our PCDIY ecosystem. Okay. All right. So um, next up, let's go ahead and go to, um, I think, actually a really cool mouse that I like and that's actually uh, compact and, and clean, also still pretty lightweight. And that is going to be the ROG Strix Impact 2 wireless. So that's this guy right here. Again, this model is going to be both a wired and wireless based um, model. So go ahead and remove it. Again, you can see that the cable is removal. This uses a, a nice TPE uh, lightweight based cable. It's not as lightweight as the ROG Paracord cable, but it's still pretty smooth in terms of overall not having kind of drag or resistance is kind of you're moving it over. Um, it still also features a dockable design. So at the base right here, you can go ahead and pull out uh, the actual uh, wireless transmitter. So you're good to go in that regard. And then from there, uh, actually go ahead and get a little bit closer right here. See right here, you've got your DPI, you've got your on and off, right? Here's the dock, right, for the, the wireless, your USB-C connection right there. You can already see I've gone ahead and enabled the lighting. So you've got lighting right there that's going to be present in the encoder. So the actual scroll wheel um, right here, of course. This also has a nice kind of cool, soft, translucent design uh, that I think looks really clean, really slick. It's got a kind of semi-ambidextrous based design. So it looks feels really good, especially for people that tend to favor a little bit more kind of palm, a little bit of grip. Uh, you can actually kind of really go all three ways. There is side texture right here, which is nice. So it gives your uh, kind of thumb a little bit more kind of uh, grip there that you can kind of hold into. So it does actually have a little bit of kind of etching, a little bit of depth to it. Uh, your side buttons right there that you can see, okay? And just like the previous model, you can see right there, there's the rubber grommets. So one, two, three, four. This one you can also go ahead and customize um, and replace the micro switches. Now I'm not going to do it on this model because we've gone ahead and already done it on our previous model, but you can go ahead and customize the switches. But this model does not come with the ROG micro switches. It comes with high grade um, Omron switches, I believe rated for 50 million clicks. So still really good in terms of its overall kind of quality and performance. And the great thing is that you have that flexibility over time that if you want to uh, change things out, then you can go ahead and do that still with that model as well. Let me go ahead and just double check if there's any questions there. And I'm going to go and uh, show this model a little bit more closely here. So let me go ahead and bring this up for you guys. This is going to be the strict impact to here we go. There we go. All right. And this one is $79.99, so this one's actually coming in a bit cheaper than the uh, the previous ultralight that we have. But still, like I said, this is a pretty still lightweight base model. 93 grams is going to be its weight. Um, I'm a really big fan of this design. I really like it in terms of the overall kind of the look and feel. Okay. And uh, let me see here. Actually, I might be able to do it here on this one. There we go. And you can just see, here's the cable attached, pretty straightforward, right? And it does already come with, included with the cable tie that's on this one. And again, this one is also a USB-C, just like the others right there. You can just see if there's any questions right there. Um, hey, Jonathan, I'm not exactly sure in, in regards to your question. If you can clarify, that would be great. I'll try to see if I can go ahead and uh, 
respond that a little bit more um, uh, for you specifically. Uh, but um, yeah, if you can go ahead and just provide a little bit more insight, that would be fantastic. So uh, with this model too, you also, of course, uh, uh, none of the models you have to worry about. It's not really been kind of a big factor as of late, but these are all going to be optical based, of course, sensors, high quality, high performance, uh, really good surface tracking and overall kind of lift off customization options as well within the Armor Crate software. So nothing you have to kind of worry about there. Also, you have onboard memory profiles. Um, so another kind of nice unit. And I'll kind of just give you a little bit of a hand shot right there if you kind of want to see. I'm six foot two, um, so I've got lar definitely larger hands. Uh, you know, for me, sometimes I'd favor something a little bit on the larger side, uh, which you're going to see right here. If we go ahead and get a little bit closer, uh, you can see this is the Gladius 3. Okay. And uh, I think actually, let me check to see if I have the dimensions right here on this one, the impact. Yeah, so the this is going to have a pretty much very similar uh, width. So this is going to be 62 uh, centimeters in terms of the actual width. Um, in terms of the height, most of these are going to be pretty similar. Uh, the Curious, which we had right here a little bit earlier, are going to be pretty similar. But you see, this one actually has a little bit more of a hump to it. This is the Gladius 3, so this is going to be 44. Um, so definitely, if you favor a little bit more of that traditional palm, sometimes you prefer to have a little bit more of that height. So if we kind of turn them here to the side, you'll see that definitely one is going to have um, kind of a higher art to it than the other. So depending kind of on your preference in terms of your grip style and kind of the, the size of your hand, right, then one might favor one versus the other, right? So you can see right here. And these are all going to kind of be, I think, very popular options. If we just kind of recap right here, Kyrus is going to be at 79 grams. The Impact 2 is going to be at 93 grams. And then the Gladius 3 is going to be at 89 grams. So this is going to kind of be a very good kind of trifecta in terms of uh, similar type of models, but they're going to also have some different design intents, some different levels of features and functionality, um, you know, uh, but all of them, you can swap out the switches. Um, this one's going to, of course, be also the most, most basic technically within this lineup here. So uh, let me go ahead and just bring up the last part here for the Impact 2, and we'll get ready to actually jump into our next mouse right here. And we'll just show you some close-up kind of shots so you can kind of get a sense of uh, the Impact 2 a little bit kind of closed up. And then we'll get ready to jump into our next model right here. All right, here you guys go. So this is just a little bit closer look at the uh, ROG Strix Impact 2 wireless from the top. There you go. You can see the front with the USB-C. Again, full independent uh, left and right buttons right there. The nice side grip texture, the two buttons there that are on the side. And then from there, you can also see the 100% PTFE feet that's there on the bottom, the DPI switch that's there on the bottom, and then, of course, the wireless off and on, and then, of course, the docking storage uh, portion, which is under underneath it, uh, which also allows you to go ahead and have the uh, receiver, the wireless receiver, also present there. And you can see how compact that little, uh, that little adapter is. It's a very, very small adapter. So again, if I kind of pull that out for reference, you'll be able to see just how small it is. It's very compact, really nice, but it does have a little bit of kind of a, a notch and angle on there. So you can take your fingernail and have a, the ability to kind of um, kind of just catch on that top part and pull it out a little bit more easily. All right. Cool. All right, guys. So that is going to be the impact too. Okay. And again, remember that uh, for the mice, we do currently have a promo that is going on. Uh, let me go ahead and actually just put that into the chat. It's ROG 10 wireless. And that is right now active at the Asus eStore for any one of the peripherals. So that is uh, pretty cool in terms of that you have that promotion that's available to you right now. Yeah, definitely, Jonathan, I would agree that it's a definitely a sleek, simple, and clean-based design. Really nice for in terms of being a mobile-friendly mouse, but of course, you have both wired and wireless-based connectivity. But keep in mind that that's also kind of a difference that you have with um, 
the uh, Keras or Chris, depends on kind of how you tell it, but this one is a tri-mode based mouse. So this one has 2.4 Bluetooth and USB-C um, with this model is gonna be a little bit different. All right, so dual mode essentially. All right. Okay, so that is gonna be the Keras and the RG Strix Impact 2. So I guess I will leave the Keras and the Impact 2 out just for kind of reference. Oh, uh, actually, let me show you guys that quickly here. So you can see just the difference between kind of the RG paracord cable and the kind of cable that comes with Keras. So this is the cable right here that comes with the Impact. This is a soft, malleable TPE based cable. It's very nice. It doesn't have a lot of drag to it. It is still lightweight. Okay. But here, this is the RG paracord cable. And the paracord cable has a actually different type of textile material, which is actually even. Uh, more kind of malleable, softer and lighter weight. Um, so it essentially is just gonna be even kind of more optimal for those that kind of want really, really great kind of smooth, um, kind of no drag uh, performance. And with the TPE, you get a little bit, just a little bit more drag. It's still very smooth. You can see straight here on the cable, I can just brush it kind of along and it's not gonna actually cause me anything, but this is even gonna be a smoother base material. So that is kind of the benefit here with the RG Paracord versus with the TPE. Both great quality cables, but this is what comes included with the uh, Impact, and then this is what would come included with some of our newer mice, so this is gonna be like the Keras uh, or the Gladius 3. Okay. okay, so before we actually get to, I think, the, um, the Gladius 3, because I've covered that one a bit, I want to cover one that hasn't been covered as much, and that's going to be the Pugio 2. The Pugio 2 was definitely one of my favorites um, that we actually previously had with the Pugio 1, kind of ambidextrous based design. It's this one right here that I'm using. Um, very, very nice in terms of its overall design and overall aesthetic. It's got this cool little kind of underglow lighting right here, coarse lighting right there that's also there, and then also with the encoder. A second there, guys. Okay, great. Just want to go ahead and disable that quickly there because I am using this. So you do have the underglow lighting. Now this model is going to be a little bit different and I'll show some close-up images, but the top cover right here is going to be uh, where you actually have the storage as opposed to the underside. So you can see that you can remove that top cover. It is translucent, which allows the actual ROGI emblem to shine through. Uh, you have some customization flexibility uh, flexibility there. Um, there's an internal storage bay that's on the inside of the unit that you can go ahead and put the receiver. Pretty much just looks like the other receivers that we showed off. Um, if we go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look right here, you can see how easy it is. It's got, you can see that nice little translucent design, really nice kind of little bit of longer body. Um, let me see here. Yeah, this is 126 centimeters in the length. So um, almost really one of our longest mice of uh, similar to the Gladius 3. So I'm going to put these kind of side by side right here. The only mouse that would be longer than this um, would be uh, the Chakram and then from there the Spot the X. So these are kind of favoring, I think, a large amount of users, but definitely also users that do have a little bit of a larger hand. Okay. Um, so uh, you can see still independent switches. You still have the ability to go ahead and customize those switches. So just like the other mice, if you want to go ahead and swap out your switches, you can do that. There's the USB-C port that's on there. Uh, you have the DPI adjustment, which is on the fly as well with the unit. Uh, pairing button for the tri-mode connectivity because it supports 2.4 gigahertz USB-C and the 2.0, uh, excuse me, and Bluetooth. Uh, here's the underglow lighting. And again, if we remove this, You'll actually see right there, here's your customization plate, right? Uh, and that is where you would store the actual tray right there. And let me go ahead and light this up for you guys. So you can kind of see what it looks like there. Actually, that's in Bluetooth, sorry. Let me stop that, there we go. And you can see it has that kind of cool little kind of diffused look to it, right? 
And you can see there you have the lighting on the encoder. And then you also have the underglow lighting. So let me actually show you the accessories that come included with this model. Give me one second, guys. And I'll also take a look and see if there's anything that I see. Okay, yeah, if anything comes up, just feel free again, go ahead and ask guys. So let me go ahead and open this up here. This one, it's gonna be pretty similar to the others. All right, there we go. So you're going to get this a cool kind of little case right here. And I will show you there a little bit of close up of that. So this is cool because this comes uh, with some of our higher end mice like the Gladius 3. So you've actually got a micro switch puller that comes included right there. You get a replacement set of switches right there or alternate set of switches if you want to go ahead and swap those out to be able to see what they look like. And then from there, you also have different um, side buttons. And the reason why is that depending actually on kind of your grip tile and being left or right-handed, this actually can be favorable in terms of customizing the experience for yourself. Okay. And accessory wise, pretty straightforward. Um, and it also comes with one of these little guys right here, a little ROG kind of sticker if you like that. Okay. And cable on this one is also going to be the PTFE cable right here. Excuse me, TPE, TPE cable. So just like the um, like the Impact Two. So that is everything you're going to get there with the Pugio Two. Let me go ahead and bring this one up for you, and we'll take a look at some kind of the closer images. This is the Pugio 2 that we're checking out. And I really like the feel of this one, really well balanced. Like I said, that little bit of a longer body compared to something like the Kyrus or the Impact, I think favors people with maybe a little bit larger hands. And the weight wise is still not bad. This is at 102. Um, you'll actually find that globally, some of them, uh, actually the, consistently over about the last kind of five to 10 years, most popular mice have historically been in the 100 to 120 grams plus. So the kind of ultra light movement, while it's become very popular, you'll actually find that the vast majority of people are running actually mice within this bracket. And so this is actually very comfortable in terms of the overall weight distribution and feel. And I actually will tell you, even between like an 80 gram to 100 gram mouse, while you can kind of notice the difference, it's really something that you kind of want to try out and feel because sometimes if the shape is more comfortable and better, you can still actually still have kind of a really good range of movement and flexibility. And also kind of your surface uh, material that you're using for the actual um, tracking can also affect the things as well along, of course, with the cable. Um, and again, remember the cable that comes included with this one is not the RG Paracord, but the uh, still lightweight, very smooth uh, TPE based cable comes with the Pugio 2. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look here at just some images for the Pugio 2. All right. Um, here we go. Load those up for you guys. So let me just see there, um, any questions there? Hey, so uh, Ro Ron Tano is asking actually a little bit about X570 while those pictures load up. Um, you can entirely put, of course, a 5000 5, G series CPU on an X570 board, but for many users, they would probably favor putting one of those CPUs because of their price point on probably a B550 motherboard. I would probably recommend our, our, um, our ROG Strix B550-F gaming 
um, or also the Tough Gaming V550 Plus or Pro models. I think those two models would be outstanding choices to pair with something like a Ryzen 5600G or a Ryzen 5700G just because of the respective kind of price and feature set. Um, you know, X570 is kind of really, uh, I think, best suited to users that want the kind of most advanced uh, features within a build, um, looking for even more I.O. connectivity and also looking to leverage PCI Gen 4 on both the chipset side and uh, the primary CPU lanes. And, you know, with this CPU specifically, it doesn't necessarily have that. So um, it's a little bit more uh, well suited to, I think, uh, the B550 based chipset. So here, let's go ahead and take a look at the PGA2. You can see it's got that cool little uh, underglow lighting, that more kind of ambidextrous design. Also still have that side get profile, very similar to the Impact 2 wireless that we talked about right there. You can see that nice angled aesthetic. And of course, remember those buttons are uh, customizable. You can go ahead and uh, swap out or change out those side buttons in terms of their profile. USB-C connection as well, because of course this is tri-mode. So USB-C, 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth. And you do have multiple profiles, which is great. And of course, lighting. So three zone lighting at the underglow, the ROGI at the back, and then from there, of course, also on the encoder, the scroll wheel. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and just uh, set this mouse aside, um, play for you guys just a little bit of a loop here on kind of uh, the Pugio 2 and um, double check, see if there's kind of any questions for anybody while we get ready to kind of take a look at our next mouse. And keep in mind the cool thing too here is that you do have kind of, um, I think a lot of flexibility with any one of these kind of tri-mode enabled mice, right? That again, you can kind of swap back and forth between different devices. I myself sometimes might want to keep like the USB cord maybe connected to my desktop and then have the wireless um, trans, excuse me, yes, uh, the, uh, the wireless uh, accessory attached to maybe let's say like the laptop um, or vice versa, you know, just kind of gives you that flexibility or maybe on the Bluetooth side, just kind of depends. And so that's really kind of one of the cool things that you have with any of the mice that are going to support three-way levels of connectivity. All right, guys. So that brings us there. So we have now covered over on the first model the ROG Keras, ultra lightweight, right? So this one's gonna be 79 grams. The ROG uh, Strix Impact 2, uh, which is going to be 93 grams. The ROG Pugio 2, uh, so that's gonna be 102 grams. And just, I guess I can show you kind of side by side here on these. You guys wanna see? Give me one second. And light those all up for you guys. There we go. Okay. There you go. And you can see a little bit of the difference in the shape, right? Definitely this one's a little bit kind of more uh, along with the Pugio 2 and that ambidextrous base design. The hump is also lower here. On the Impact 2, this is 38.6, uh, and then on the Pugio 2, it's 40. So uh, this one's just gonna be a little bit of a taller arc that you have, which is again, depending if you go with a little bit more full coverage kind of palm style, this is gonna be, I think, a little bit more favorable, right? But again, a lot of this is very personal. Okay, so let's move over to our next mouse. And I think now we're gonna talk about the Gladius 3. You see there, hey Shadow Fox. Uh, so Shadow Fox is asking about the scroll wheel design. Um, you know, for us, uh, it's just, think in terms of the overall user experience, it doesn't tend to necessarily be kind of a critical item that we've seen a huge amount of feedback on. Um, I think most users have asked to ensure that the actual encoding performance and the actual, um, I'd say, the steps that you have for the encoder are clean and consistent. Sometimes um, you actually have users that will note that the actual encoder performance, um, it doesn't have a uh, kind of a noticeable step progression. So if I want to kind of go one 
two, three, four, five. It tends to be kind of very smooth and very fast, a little bit too slick. Um, and so what we've spent time on is not only in, in putting an encoder that has actually very clean, a smooth progression, but also has noticeable and distinct uh, progression steps. But definitely, you know, um, I think as we'll continue to kind of look from feedback from the community, if we feel that users are really looking at maybe wanting to have that type of functionality, you know, it's something that we can evaluate towards the future. But um, as of right now, it's not something that we've seen that there's been a large amount of feedback regarding. So hopefully that does answer your question. Um, next things next. So let's go ahead and jump over here into the Gladius 3. So the Gladius 3 is kind of going to be our uh, kind of flagship uh, model. It's uh, coming in at 89 grams. So it's not our lightest weight, right? Because we definitely have lighter weight mice than this, but it's still very lightweight. I think for a wireless based model, but it offers, I think the most impressive set of features functions uh, when it comes to the overall wireless experience, short of kind of maybe um, uh, the Chakram and the Spatha, which have very, very kind of specialized kind of button uh, layout designs, which can be favored towards those in kind of action RPG, MMO kind of, kind of scenarios. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at this model, but this has gone through quite a bit of kind of refinement over the generations. We've had, of course, the Gladius 1, the Gladius 2, and now the Gladius 3. Um, and it does carry over a lot of what we talked about with the first model. So you're going to, of course, have the uh, ROG micro switches that are going to be on this model. It does also have the OmniFeet, 100% PTFE freight. It is also going to be a tri-mode based mouse. So you have, of course, 2.4 gigahertz, USB-C, and then the Bluetooth. Um, has DPI button where remember on the Kiris, which is a little bit more compact, the DPI button is underneath on the model. So you can press it to shift between kind of three different stages in terms of DPI. Let me actually show you kind of what that looks like if you guys want to see. So this model right here, if let's say I wanted to go ahead and customize the DPI, I could press that and it would switch the DPI mode. So I'll click it again and switches the DPI mode. Click it again. And so that's kind of cool if you want to want to quickly toggle back and forth between different DPI. Um, some people are, of course, more familiar with kind of a traditional DPI option, which right here exists on this model, where you can see that you've got the DPI adjustment right there with a button. Then you've got your left and right buttons right there, your two side buttons. Um, laser imprinted finish right here that does have a textured finish to it. And then also the magnetic dock right there so that you can put in uh, the wireless receiver, OK? And there is your pairing button as well. So, excuse me, pairing button. And uh, this is uh, swappable right here for profiles. So let me go ahead and put that into wireless so you can see the lighting on this one. So you can see right there, you've got accent lighting on the scroll wheel, ROG lighting right there. And then there's also lighting there on the side profile. And then 100% PTFE free. And this one also uses, just like the Kiris, you've got the ROG paracord cable. So USB-C connection for this model. Connects in, and you're good to go. If you want to go uh, the wired route. And uh, here, we're going to go ahead and take a closer look, and we'll show you the PushFit 2 socket design on this model. So give me one second right here, and we'll show you what makes a PushFit 2 socket design different. So with PushFit 2, kind of really the big um, upgrade is that you have the support to be able to use optical switches along with the ROG micro switches, which come included with this model. So that's pretty cool, especially if you kind of really favor the benefit in terms of the uh, performance that you have with optical switches, then that's going to be kind of a key benefit. But I do want to note that with the with the design that we already have with the zero gap design, uh, we can essentially almost have a, essentially a zero debounce delay design with both optical and mechanical switches. And so the Gladius 3 um, also has really, really impressive performance where we have a specially tuned sensor um, that we actually even do what's called sensor deviation measurement analysis so that when it's during production, we're actually measuring each sensor that goes in the unit to meet an actual tight tolerance that exceeds industry standards. So the Gladius 3 really gives you an ultra high performing optical sensor then aligned with those ROG micro switches, the zero gap design, um, the zero click kind of latency performance that we integrate here along with everything else really I make this I think the overall kind of premier high performance option for I think FPS centric and kind of general gaming kind of mice 
both wired and wireless. So this is kind of really my go-to recommendation for a lot that are really looking for an outstanding option. And if you had to go lighter weight, then of course you could consider uh, the Kyrus, which would be coming in at a lighter uh, weight. So uh, let me go ahead and kind of just bring up some images for you guys here. And we'll see what's going on. Okay. Load that up for you guys and load up some images here. Okay, and while that loads up, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out and I'm not going to re go through the entirety of um, changing out the switches again, but I've got some close up images that I can show you guys how it looks like. But again, for this model, it's very simple. There's literally going to be two screws. So you'll see two screws again. We just remove those two screws. Once we remove those two screws, we'll have access to uh, the inside. And on the inside, this one will feature the two, the push fit two socket design. And let me go ahead and uh, bring that up here. So push fit two. Yeah, there we go. So here's an image to kind of let you see the difference in terms of the side by side between push fit one and between push fit two. So very simple. You can see once I remove those two screws, it lifts off right there. And again, I have access to the inside. So here you can see a close-up image. You'll see push fit socket one, which is on going to be on the left-hand side of the screen, and then push fit socket two, which is on the right-hand side. So push fit socket two is exclusive to the Gladius three. Um, it's actually got a new type of uh, design housing, which is even more secure, more rigid, and more stable. And again, supports both the three pin and the five pin, where you can see that on the push fit one, which is on the left-hand side, it only gives you essentially the three pin interface. So this is a very important distinction. So you do want to kind of keep this in mind between the two, okay? And so here's just a little bit of kind of some close-up images before we get into kind of looking at how it swaps that out. As you can see the top, there's the bottom, 100% PTFE free, right? You can see, of course, the storage there for um, the uh, wireless trans, uh, the wireless receiver, uh, your uh, pairing button, your tri-mode selection option as well, and your profile button, which is also there to be able to swap between profiles. There's the side uh, profile lighting along with the grip, the texture. It's a little bit of a different texture design than we have, let's say, like on the Impact or the Pugio 2. And then there's a different kind of a side grip that's on the other side. Um, so definitely still, even if you've kind of got a little bit more sweaty hands, it holds up really well, USB-C, and then everything you get inside the box. Now, the cool thing is that this one does come quite a bit. You also get uh, the secondary set of switches, the secondary set of um, replacement PTFE free. You have the ROG paracord cable, and you also have an extension um, if you're gonna be using the kind of the wireless uh, dongle. Um, so let me actually go ahead and show you kind of what that looks like here. So I think I have the box here, guys. One second. Here we go. So let's say you were in a situation where you you wanted to go ahead and uh, put the receiver. You, you wanted to put the the wireless right here. You're going to have an accessory that comes included with that. So you can adapt the essential the cable. So if you have some more flexibility right here with this unit. So you can essentially put this on the ROG paracord cable. So an example would be here, right? And so you would plug this in here into your system, and then you could put the actual wireless here so that if you needed to have better positioning, uh, kind of better signal reception, whatever it might be, you can go ahead and attach that. So that does come included with uh, the ROG Gladius 3 wireless. And those are the replacement PTFE feet. 
Um, you can see just like the other one, very simple. If you want to go ahead and swap out there, you want to go ahead and take out the RG micro switch and put in the uh, five pin optical base switch. We could do that. Or again, if you want to kind of customize this and go with a different switch, you can do that as well. You can see how simple it is again to kind of customize it, swap that out. Okay, guys, so uh, let me go ahead and just assemble that. And again, this is the adapter right here that I was talking about. So there you've got your, your wireless adapter. You can just dock that in there. And then from there, you would attach your RG paracord cable if you needed to here and then that would still plug into your system. So then that way you could position this kind of wherever you want. And the reason why we've gone ahead and done that is because in some scenarios, what you'll actually find is that when you kind of plug into the back of a motherboard, in some situations, when you kind of plug this into the back of a system, there can actually be kind of interference or there could be a potential line of sight issues, some things that can kind of cause problems. Now, technically you don't need to adhere to line of sight because this is radio frequency. It's not like it's an IR based uh, transmitter. But in some scenarios, you can actually get better performance um, by essentially maybe repositioning this. So maybe kind of moving this around, putting this, you know, at the corner of a desk or maybe, you know, somewhere else uh, where you essentially wouldn't be experiencing any type of issues. Let me see if there's any questions there while I disassemble that mouse and also have a little bit of drink of tea here. Let me see right there. Um, yeah, I definitely think that, uh, the Gladius or the Pugio really solid options. I'm a fan of both. It's a really hard call. Um, they're pretty similar. You know, I, I really like the underglow lighting of the Fugio too, though. Um, it's actually one of my favorite designs on the actually Gladius two, uh, that we offered. Um, so it's hard, but I think that, you know, one of the really nice things is having essentially the Gladius 3 that comes with the ability to use those optical switches and also even that more specially tuned sensor. I think I would probably favor the Gladius 3 over the Pugio 2, but the Pugio 2 is still really nice. And I think it's it's wide body shape is also works really well. So, you know, both of them are really solid options. It kind of just really comes down to, again, kind of your user preference here. So um, let me just go ahead and play this for you guys here in the background while I go ahead and just put this mouse back together quickly here and just again show you how simple it is if you want to be able to um, put these guys together. So again, just literally put that there on the top, take your two screws, put that into place, put on your rubber grommets and you're good to go. And right there, you see the safe profiles. It kind of gets often overlooked, but I am, again, I'm a big fan of having kind of customized profiles. I like to use profiles for um, essentially having kind of like my desktop profiles and then gaming profiles. So the benefit that you have with having multiple profiles um, is that let's say maybe you want to have certain buttons mapped for specific functions inside the OS, um, maybe like as uh, copy and paste, although you could do that, of course, on your keyboard. It could be certain action commands. You can do a lot of different types of layers of kind of customization, and then you could kind of switch into your game profile mode, which would have a different kind of set of options. Um, the other thing, too, is, of course, with the Bluetooth, it is a three-point Bluetooth profile system, so you could essentially have this paired to, let's say, um, you know, a desktop, a laptop, um, and a tablet, right? Literally all three could be paired. So then you makes the experience kind of more quick and easy when you're going back and forth between different devices. So that is going to be the Gladius 3. So we've now kind of in total, we've gone through four of these different mice. Um, let me just go ahead and recap for you guys the weight on, the, on these models, just so we can make sure to kind of keep that consistent. So again, uh, from the top, if we go with kind of the, the, the lightest weight, that's going to be the Keras, uh, which is going to be at 79 grams. Okay. We're then going to go to 
the Gladius 3, which is going to be at 89 grams. We're then going to go to the Impact 2, which is going to be at 93 grams. And then we're going to go to the Pugio 2, which is going to be at 102 grams. Okay. And if you guys want to see a side by side on those, um, then you know, feel free and uh, let me know. Let me put those in there. And uh, let me actually also check and just see uh, where we're at on with any questions that might have come up. Hey, John. Yeah, fantastic. I definitely agree with you. A lot of work that we've put into these mice. So the reason why we wanted to focus kind of having a dedicated stream to really kind of be able to highlight everything that we're doing here um, in terms of the overall design aesthetic. And William, also, thanks. I appreciate uh, kind of the design feedback. And again, if I'm kind of missing anything, if there's something specifically kind of you guys are wondering about, feel free and let me know. And I'll definitely do my best to go ahead and uh, highlight that for you guys. Yeah, I definitely agree. The side design accents on that laser etching that we have on the Gladius 3 is really slick, really clear, really clean. Um, so John's asking uh, about uh, if we're going to be producing ROG RAM. At this time, there's nothing planned, but as always, if you're part of the group, then you're definitely going to find out about any type of updates that we have as soon as we have them when it comes to kind of new product designs, things along those lines. All right, guys. Uh, so let me just go ahead and do a quick check off here. We went ahead and covered the Gladius 3, uh, the Karius, the Pugio 2, the Impact 2. Um, so now let's go ahead and jump into, I think, a really kind of special model. And that's going to be with the Chakram. Okay. So, oh, you know, I didn't even put the box out there for the, the Gladius 3. Right. But we did cover it. We did cover it. So let me actually just, again, um, put that link there for anybody that's interested in the Gladius 3. And we'll jump into the Chakram. All right, guys. So uh, let me go ahead and get ready to jump into the shock room here. All right. Now, the shock room is a pretty cool, crazy mouse because it's got um, some really cool design uh, implementations on it. All right. So it's also going to be, um, I think, Height wise, yeah, 45, uh, excuse me, 42.8. So it's a little bit actually uh, shorter than what we have on the, um, excuse me, a little bit shorter than what we have on the Gladius 3, uh, but it's going to be longer. So this is 132. Um, so except for the spot, the X, there's not going to be a longer mouse that we offer. So again, if you're kind of somebody that has a much bigger hand, much longer in terms of the palm, um, and you're looking for kind of a little bit more of that full kind of coverage in terms of the uh, where your palm is sitting up against the mouse, if you prefer like a traditional, uh, more traditional kind of palm grip, I really think you're going to like the chakram. You'll also see here for somebody that me, like it has a big hand, um, it also gives your thumb a nice resting point right here because there's um, an extruded portion that sits outside here on this side. And so we'll definitely take a closer look here. So let me go ahead and bring this up. So here you can see the chakram. It's got a really cool design aesthetic. Uh, multiple points of lighting. So there in the encoder, uh, then there's also lighting that's at the front. It's got this cool little kind of uh, front visor lighting that's there. And then there, it's also on the back. And then you can also see you've got that side lip profile that's on there. There's also going to be the textured finish that's right here. Let's see, let me do that, guys. That's a little bit better. So again, kind of recapping. Three points of lighting, one point of lighting right there. The uh, kind of the visor there that's in the front for one point of lighting. And then another point of lighting right there, right? It's got a translucent based design. This one's very similar to the Pugio where you've got that kind of removable element right there. You can see there you have the wireless uh, storage. You also have the customization element where this can be customized on the unit. So if you want to go ahead and swap that out, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, you can see right there, you've got some nice textured finish there for some side grip. And there you've got the digital joystick that's also on here. Now, this can be customized. Um, so if you want to remove it, you can do that. But you can also remap this, and you can do some really cool functions uh, with that. And right here, you've also got more um, uh, texture for grip. And this is magnetic. So just kind of you can remove it, 
store it on there really nicely, really easily. Um, the chakram does come with a lot, so it actually comes included with this cool little kind of travel case. And it also comes with a cable right there. This is actually a little bit of a different cable. It's a high quality, it's a thicker braided cable. It's not as lightweight as the TPE base cable um, or as it's kind of lightweight and as smooth as the paracord cable, but it is still braided, smooth finish. It's still gonna be minimal in terms of the drag, but it'll be a little bit heavier than what we will have with the TPE base uh, material or the RG paracord cable. Uh, but you still have USB-C in terms of the connectivity right there. It also does support quick charging support. If we switch over to the bottom, you have the uh, Bluetooth pairing button, uh, three point uh, adjustment. So you can go from essentially off um, 2.4 gigahertz wireless and then from there Bluetooth and then the DPI, which can also be changed there on the fly. So you can see if I press that, I'm switching through the DPI modes. Uh, so you can go ahead and kind of customize that. And let me actually show you what else comes in included with that. And actually, let me load something up here for you guys for the chakram. All right, here we go. And we'll load up some images as well. Just to get that a little bit more. Okay, great. So... The Chakram also comes with a little kind of same thing that we showed here. You get one of these little ROG stickers as well, the uh, braided cable, the little carrying pouch. And then uh, you also get this right here, which is this is the customizable plate. So if you want to remove this, you can actually remove this the ROG portion, and you could swap that out and you could kind of etch it, you could put whatever you want to kind of customize that yourself. And this model also comes right here with the accessory. So this is the same thing kind of that we talked about right here. So if you connect this side to your computer, right, you could connect this, and then you could put the wireless adapter on there. So if you needed better kind of um, radio reception performance for your wireless, you don't have to connect to the back of the system. This would connect to your back of your system. And then you would put this wherever kind of works best for you. Okay. And then you also get that cool little box that comes with the other options that you have there. So again, micro switch puller. So you can go ahead and change out the switches if you want to, because this mouse, you can fully customize the switches. You can change out the micro switches on there. You can see that it comes with an alternate set of micro switches. And then you also have the uh, different types of covers right here for the digital joystick so that if you want to essentially uh, make it flush where you don't have that, or if you want a different size, then you can also swap that out. So you can see right there, um, you can go ahead and remove this right here. This is the digital joystick. So you can see actually I can move it in different directions. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with different types of games, different types of environments, okay? And you can go ahead and customize that. So you can set it up however you'd like. So let me go ahead and just put this back in place here for the Chakram. And it's got a pretty cool box. If you like boxes, it's a pretty nice box that comes with the Chakram. Um, and I will show you here in a moment, but this is also the Batlist. This is our actually gaming surface, but this is the Qi Batlist. And that's the other cool thing about the Chakram is that the Chakram does offer wireless charging. So it does have the quick charging through the USB-C, but if you also go ahead and dock this with the, um, with the Qi portion on the Batlist. So if you actually guys can see right here in the front, Try to make that a little bit clearer for you guys. If you move it over into that section, this portion, actually, there's a little LED that lights up on there, and it will go ahead and charge this unit wirelessly, so you don't even have to connect the cable. So that is on the, the, uh, the bat list that we have there. 
I'll show you guys that in a moment here. So give me one second. Okay, very cool. And you can see all magnetic and we're all set and we're good to go. So very simple, very nice to work with. And we've got a really good write up at um, edgeup.asus.com, which actually dives into this mouse and kind of how you can actually use the um, the thumbs, uh, excuse me, the joystick, if you want to be able to kind of customize it for different types of scenarios, different types of game environments and things along those lines. But let me go ahead and actually show you the images here so you can guys can take a little bit of a closer look, even though we had kind of a close look there. One second there. There we go. All right. So here you go. You can see there's the actual bat list with the uh, wireless charging. You can just shift it over and you can charge there wirelessly. You can see that you can go ahead and remove that and customize it to different sizes of shape. Um, really great battery life in terms of this, of course. So, uh, that's actually a hallmark, I think, with all of these. You got a lot of flexibility. And one of the cool things we'll show you when we jump into the Armory Crate software is that um, Armory Crate software has been updated to give you real-time battery uh, monitoring information for your mouse as you have it connected. So you can just go down into the bottom tray and you can actually see your monitoring uh, for your battery in real time. And of course, there's the ASUS Aura Sync support and lighting. Here's a kind of breakdown of everything that you saw there that we showed. So the detachable cover, the customization, which you can see has been customized right there. High quality optical sensor, right? Tracking performance. Um, all of this is available to you. And of course, the tri-mode connectivity. So 2.4 gigahertz, USB-C and Bluetooth, just like the other uh, mice that we've kind of been talking about here. And the DPI adjustment, which we showed off earlier, where you can just click that button. You don't have to be in the software. You can go ahead and adjust that. Okay. So that is going to be that guy right there. Very, very cool. So that is the Chakram. Um, as I kind of, let me just put some of these items right here. I'm just going to show this little kind of video in the background. I will do some kind of side-by-sides with the mouse here. And if you guys have any questions, then uh, just let me know on the Chakram before we get into kind of our next mouse. All right, so one sec, guys. And here you can actually see how you could actually program this for kind of movement or opening the map. There's a lot of flexibility that you have. Um, it's really cool. It's one definitely a mouse that you have to spend some time and effort on in terms of kind of learning um, how you can kind of really take advantage of that digital level of control, but it's a really cool level of functionality. So I'm gonna take a look here, guys, see if I just see any kind of questions. Um, somebody's asking, hey, Joe, I'm um, asking about fans. We've actually had this question asked a, a bit in the um, uh, ASUS PC DIY Facebook group, and definitely I would make sure to check out that kind of more in-depth post. We have recently launched the XF120 fan, and we're definitely looking at the design and development in the future for an RGB-based solution, but nothing to announce at this time. So just make sure and go ahead and can, kind of keep it tuned um, in the future, all right? so. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the next mouse, man. So we are gonna go ahead and get into the next one. So that's the Chakram again. And uh, weight-wise, let me just go ahead and recap that for you guys one more time. Um, this one is gonna be one of the heaviest ones at 121 grams uh, for the mouse. And I'll do a little just side-by-side, -side, I think, for some of the most physically different in terms of the overall uh, design. So one sec right here, guys. Maybe the Curious and yeah, the Pugio. So let's do let's do all those. Yeah, I think that works well. Okay, so there he goes, guys. So here you guys can see. Let me 
try to get those a little bit tighter. Yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go. So you can see here's the chakram. Um, the chakram is the longest at 132 and then it has a 42.8 uh, on the height. Okay, uh, Gladius 3 here is going to be 123 in terms of the length and then 44 on the height. So still a little bit taller with a little bit more of that arc, a little bit more for if you want that kind of that broader kind of feel. Um, so it can feel similar even though this one has that. But keep in mind the chakram here, right? You've got that extended lip there, which works really well for kind of your thumb. Um, then here the Pugio 2, which has that kind of it's a more ambidextrous based design, um, kind of more symmetrical, right, on both the left and right-hand side. Um, still pretty long at 126 and 40, which is still going to be shorter than both the Chakram and the Gladius three. And then from here, then here, kind of the most uh, compact, which is going to be 118 on the length and then 39 on the height, right? Um, and then if we can even want to, we could fit it in there, you get the impact in there, which you can see is also pretty similar as well. All right, guys. So let's get ready to jump into our next uh, mouse right here. And we will then actually get ready to get rid into keyboards, guys. Excited about this. OK, very cool. And keep in mind, remember that a lot of what we talked about earlier in terms of the switches, um, the RG micro switch, the zero gap design, right? And a lot of those other kind of elements um, in, terms, in terms of the customization for the push fit socket is consistent between these as well. Okay, uh, let me just see right here. Any kind of questions I'm seeing? Okay, yeah. Somebody was asking about kind of what happens when you put the um, the chakram here on the actual bat list. So here you can see the bat list. There's the actual chi section right there. There's actually a little light right here at the top, right? And you need to make sure to connect this third USB-C cable. So the bat list actually has a USB pass-through, which is nice if you're going to connect like your wireless uh, adapter to there. So you could connect that. But if you've got the Qi edition, you do also need to connect this one to actually provide power to the actual Qi mat portion. Okay. Um, so there's a total of three cables that you would have. And then you would take this guy and you would move it over. And once it actually gets there, you can see that actual light is blinking in blue. And then uh, the actual uh, mouse itself will also start to light up in blue as well. And so once it's complete, you'll actually get a different lighting indicator. So that is all handled um, visually in terms of kind of giving you a reinforcement of how that works. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot of mice, guys, right? <laughs> all right, guys. Um, very cool. So we have now also covered uh, the chakram. So um, let's go ahead and lastly, just touch on quickly on the spot, the X and the carry. So uh, for these models, um, I don't actually have these on hand. Um, like I noted for the spot, the X, um, it is already actually listed on Amazon. You can get a pre-order, hopefully be shipping by the end of the month. Um, but this is a really uh, big update. A lot of people I know that uh, have been looking for kind of a big MMO-centric actually RPG mouse. This is going to be, I think, an, a mouse that they're really going to love. So let me go ahead and uh, bring up here what we've got for the Spatha. Spatha X, excuse me. So we'll show you guys some images here. There we go. And okay, got everything loaded up there. So yes, definitely, I would agree. Um, if you haven't actually checked out the Spotha, it's a pretty sweet mouse. Um, it's got a lot of features and functionality, a very button friendly kind of focused mouse. So if you're kind of looking for that now, in terms of the dimensions, just to kind of, uh, for anybody that's wondering 137 in terms of the length and then 45 for the height. And then 
weight wise, this is going to be 168 grams. So definitely the heaviest mouse and kind of the largest mouse that we have uh, overall. Although keep in mind um, that the height um, is still going to be similar to kind of the height um, on the Gladius 3 at 44. So it's got that kind of broader arc there. So it works really well for, I think, people that are looking for that kind of traditional full palm uh, kind of grip. So you can see it's big mouse, extended kind of a side profile design, which really kind of is similar to the Chakram, uh, really works really well. And you also have a little bit of kind of a sculpted indent on the right hand side, which works really well for kind of your pinky. So if you want a lot of kind of space to be able to make sure that your fingers don't get kind of straining from kind of having to maintain a grip, this allows your kind of hand to rest in a little bit kind of more balanced kind of tradition. Um, but of course, if you're going to have a smaller hand, then you might kind of find that it's not sitting in the kind of right space. So I think this does favor a little bit people that have larger hands uh, or have hands where they want to kind of balance all of their digits. And you can see a lot of buttons there uh, on the top right. Of course, you've got those two additional buttons, your left and right independent buttons right there. And then as you move over to the side, you can see all the buttons right there along with the textured grip that we have on this unit. And then at the base, we have, of course, um, high quality uh, design in terms of giving you smooth directionality. Of course, you can enable the wireless um, uh, functionality on there as well. Now, the cool thing is that this also has been updated to be USB-C compared to the previous generation model, uh, significantly improved the battery life performance and also improved the actual uh, number of actual charge performance that the actual battery has and charging performance as well, and also supports ASUS Aura wireless sync. It does come included with that really cool dock base and the dock base has been redesigned as well. So that allows you to kind of mount the mouse vertically dock it right in there and charge it, which is really cool. So you don't actually have to connect the cable because it has those magnetic charging pins um, and pad design that's on the underneath of the actual mouse, which I really, really like. So you pretty much just dock it and it's charging as opposed to having to connect the cable. And here you can see the actual dock by itself. And it was really key that we kind of looked uh, the entirety from the first generation to really kind of improve upon every single element that people asked, I think, and from the first generation to now this new second generation, I think every single aspect that people are wondering about, we made a transition, even including the sensor where the first generation was a laser, and this is now an optical sensor, uh, very high performance. And you can see everything that comes included, including that medic dock base, um, a little uh, case, uh, the actual spot the mouse itself, uh, customization elements so you can access it for the push fit socket design, your cables, the stickers, all kind of everything that comes included with that unit. It's a similar kind of box design as you would have to the Chakram. And um, just to kind of recap right there, you can see your metrics, very high quality sensor that we have within this unit, optical based sensor, it's been upgraded. And you can see those 12 programmable buttons, a um, lot of customization elements right there. So this is really gonna be focused, I think, towards kind of action RPG, um, MMO type scenarios, RTS scenarios as well. This is going to, where you're going to really kind of favor this type of mouse design. Um, you do have those RG micro switches that we showed off earlier. So 70 million clicks, electro gold plated, right? Really sharp, clean, audible, nice, crisp, um, you know, feel to them. And then of course the docking base design. Push fit socket design, push fit socket one, so only mechanical base sw switches in, in the unit. And this one does come included with the RG paracord cable, so that's also another upgrade. So it has the same cable that you're going to see on the Kyrus and the Gladius 3. All right, guys, so that is that. Uh, let me just see if there's any questions there on the, the Spatha. I'll go ahead and play this for you guys while I go ahead and just double check on to see if there's any questions. Very cool. Okay. Yeah, it looks like there's definitely some people that are hyped on the Espatha. Yeah, it's a fantastic mouse. And like I said, this one has already gone ahead and been listed on uh, Amazon. So it is already uh, essentially right now available kind of for pre-order. And you'll see it spread out across more retailers as we move towards the end of the month. All right, cool. So let's get to our last mounts, guys. And that's going to be the uh, ROG Strix Carry. So this is going to be uh, a mouse that also has kind of maybe gotten a little bit overlooked, uh, but I think a great choice for those that are looking for something that, again, is kind of uh, compact, 
um, and really kind of clean in terms of its overall design. And it's one of our lowest cost mice as well. So let me go ahead and load this up here. There we go. And I think that uh, I do have a link for this one for the carry. Here we go. Yep. So this is the ROG Strix Carry, uh, also very lightweight, very compact, going to be travel centric, um, but I think actually also can be used for a very compact or smaller hand as well. 72 grams, so you can definitely see it's on that lightweight side. Um, still features a lot of design hallmarks that we have that are going to be similar to the other mice that we've kind of highlighted and talked about here as well. So um, let's go ahead and kind of just give you a little bit of a run through on terms of what we have here for the ROG Strix Carry. So on this model, uh, you can see you get quite a bit right here in terms of that magnetic top cover, 2.4 gigahertz. It has that USB-C uh, connectivity as well, 50 million Omron switches that are going to be on this um, model as well. Um, you do have the ability to kind of customize the switches. This uses traditional batteries, has very long la battery life. So um, it's really ideal, I think, in that scenario where, although a lot of us have power banks and different kind of options, if you kind of want that foolproof ability to be able to swap to a traditional battery, you can just do battery replacement. And that magnetic cover makes it really nice. And overall kind of clean, compact design, right? Um, you can see the overall shape is very nice and well balanced. And again, this is going to be one of the shortest at 101 in terms of the length and then 36 for the height. So definitely going to be really kind of dimension size, the overall most compact that we offer and a very lightweight as well, 72.9 grams, right, that we talked about there. And let me just kind of give you some perspective here. I think I've got uh, one image here that I can share with you guys. Yeah. You can kind of see, um, you know, just how compact it was if you really wanted to kind of throw it in your pocket. So really nice design, compact, clean. I think well-designed, you know, good option there for, like I said, being able to throw into a bag or also, like I said, if you maybe got somebody with smaller hands, also a lightweight mouse, but you still don't want to necessarily comp compromise on the performance, still get high quality optical sensor. You still get 1000 Hertz pulling on either the 2.4 gigahertz or the actual uh, wired connection. So you got that flexibility on kind of either side of the fence. Okay, very cool. So that uh, covers us across, I think, all the mice. So we've recapped all our mice. Now we're going to lastly get into uh, keyboards and then on the, the headset side. And that will kind of recap, um, excuse me, everything that kind of we've got for 2021 in terms of kind of the ROG wireless peripheral lineup. So definitely a lot that we've already dived into, I think, just with the mice. But let's go ahead and jump into it on the keyboard side of the fence. So the first one uh, that we're going to go ahead and dive into is going to be this guy right here, which is going to be the uh, Claymore, the Claymore 2. So this is an update from the previous generation um, that we had with the first gen where, you know, we released it quite a number of years ago. And really the innovation was that, of course, you could have the numpad and you could dock it and you could have it be on one side or you could have it be on the other side. And we've gone ahead and essentially revised that and improved it in every single way. Uh, but I think the really cool thing that we also implemented was our new ROG RX optical switches. And so these switches just really kind of go to the next level in terms, I think, of their performance, their lifespan, um, their feel, kind of their wobble-free characteristic, uh, the more consistent lighting, as well as even things like the centering of the legend performance because of the way that the actual LED lighting is in the center of the housing as opposed to offset that you'll have on a traditional um, RGB switch. Um, I really am a huge fan of this keyboard. So let me go ahead and load this up for you guys here. So uh, we can actually go ahead and first take a look here. So many of you are kind of familiar with a traditional uh, TKL based kind of keyboard. So we've got that right here. Go ahead and get these mouse out of the way. All right.
And you can kind of see from kind of a, a, a size wise, um, you really get the great benefit. And of course, the big benefit that you have, of course, with TKL and Compact is going to be that ability to have kind of um, that mouse hand be very nice and next to adjacent to the actual keyboard. And that helps to reduce strain here on your arm and kind of this whole area. Um, but of course, for those of you that really like the flexibility of having a number pad, that's one of the compromises you make on a traditional TKL keyboard, like what we got here with the ROG Strix Scope TKL. Um, but with the Claymore 2, you really get that nice benefit that you, of course, don't have to compromise. You can change things up. And if you want to be able to have more flexibility, well, then guess what? You can just take the what we call the bond and you can dock it. And now all of a sudden, you now have your 10 key. And so you now have that 10 key access available to you. You've got four digital macro buttons, and then you've got the volume wheel right here as well. Um, this model also has gone ahead and been updated with USB-C connectivity. It has a USB pass-through. It supports 2.4 gigahertz and that USB-C connectivity. Um, quick speed quick charging support. You have hardware level lighting controls that are available on the keyboard right here. So you can go ahead and press function and then make those adjustments with those keys if you want. I go ahead and disconnect the cable for you guys. Um, on the back right here, if you can see right there, um, we'll show a close up there in a moment, but you actually have the on and off button. There's the USB-C connection. There's also a storage uh, bay right there for the actual wireless adapter. So you can store the wireless adapter and the actual USB-C, excuse me, the USB pass-through, which I'm a big fan of in terms of having that USB pass-through design. So again, if I wanted to remove that, super easy to remove. And we'll, we'll take a closer look here at the optical base switches. Um, at the top, also right here, you actually have a um, battery notification, which can be synced with our, uh, or RGB lighting, if you want to be able to have that. And like I said, function key to be able to adjust things. Now, some nice things that I also like, too, is that we've gone ahead and kind of customized the media key functions on here to be the prioritized default. So if you want to have things like your volume, um, stop, play, those are prioritized, and then you can just use function and alt to be able to go, excuse me, function to be able to go to the alternate key if you wanted to have that flexibility and that functionality. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here, and we'll also take a look at kind of the RX switches and a kind of a closer look. Go ahead and get that in there, you guys. Okay. Okay, so here you can see we've got the Claymore 2. So we're going to go from the top. We're going to move it down there. Nice, clean, very compact body. You have a metal uh, top casing that's on this unit right here. You can see the actual kind of status indicator right there, and that can be customized. Um, you do have, like I said, uh, the lighting controls available to you. You see light and mode. So you can press function and light to be able to sh change those up if you want to be able to go ahead and customize those elements. But the big thing here that's going to be kind of unique and more, kind of more special is going to be if we remove that, you'll see right there that the actual lighting is now in the center. And that allows all the, um, the actual legends to be center weighted as opposed to on a traditional uh, keyboard, those are not center weighted. So if you were to kind of go side by side with a, let's go ahead and maybe flip this. There we go. If you were to kind of flip this, you'll see that the, there we go. That's a little bit more balanced. There we go. Yeah. Um, if we were to move, let's say similar key, The actual LED here is at the top as opposed to being here in the center. And also you can see that all the actual legends are offset. They're kind of uh, higher up. And it's not as clean and consistent in terms of the actual lighting balance that you have available to you. So um, let me see here if I can actually show this to you guys. I don't know if this cable will work. <laughs> Hopefully the lighting there should turn on in a moment. Okay. 
There we go. Okay. So you can actually see right there that the lighting is top weighted as opposed to center weighted right here. And this actually allows us to have much more centralized and consistent lighting throughout the entirety of the top as well as on the side. And you can also do some cool stuff like you can see right here where we can do things like we can do lighting there for legends that are on the side housing, which is really cool. So that is going to kind of be one of the really key benefits there of the Claymore 2 is it uses the RX base switch. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a kind of a video here. Um, the RX base switch is something that we spent a lot of time and effort on. And one of the really cool things that we actually have with the RX version now uh, that we have gone ahead and released is that we originally launched with the RX Reds. But now we also have the RX Blues. So you have them in both kind of your linear and then you have them in your kind of clicky um, option. So either one is available to you. Now we have RX Blues and we have the RX Reds. So the choice is entirely up to you. Now, some people would wonder kind of what is really kind of the key benefit here. Well, there's kind of really three things that you're going to get in terms of providing you a benefit when you go with this type of switch is that one, it's optical. So it's going to, of course, offer you outstanding performance um, because, of course, there's essentially uh, no uh, mechanical elements there to be actually introduce more kind of debounce-based issues. Um, you're going to have a longer lifespan. And then in addition to that, you're also going to have, because of what we call our four-point four stem design, which if I kind of get close right there, you can see that, that four-point stem. Um, that stem works in combination with our, our housing design, which actually allows for something that's called um, force deviation. And when you press your actual keycap, you'll find that on traditional design, because of the actual stem being in there in the center, that there's actually more deviation as you go kind of the corner. So when you're actually typing, if you hit the top or the bottom or the corner, there's actually a little bit of wobble. And there's also some key chatter. You kind of get used to it over time. But that's really one of the nice things is that when you actually start to type on this, you'll find that the actual consistency that the way that the keys feel across anywhere that you're hitting, whether it's kind of going to be in the corner of the top or the bottom, is far more consistent, far more balanced. And I really love the way that these actual uh, keycaps feel. They're also going to be quieter uh, than I would say uh, tr compared to kind of a, a traditional uh, Cherry MX. I almost say that they're similar to kind of taking um, a uh, traditional um, switch and then maybe putting an O-Rig on them because they kind of have a little bit more of a damped, kind of smoother, quieter feel to them and sound. So I'm a big fan in terms of not only the performance and their feel, but also their optical characteristics. So let me go ahead and uh, load this up for you. And for those of you that might be wondering, again, you can go ahead and take the bond and you can put that either on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. So the cool thing here is if you do this kind of setup, right, you can literally have the keyboard and you could have it here with your uh, kind of your macro keys and your volume, and then you could still have your mouse. So you could be super set up to have that really nice kind of clean, compact design, but you still have your number pad available to you along with the macro keys and then the volume wheel. And that volume wheel's got a really nice, smooth, clean feel to it, right? And if you didn't want it, you could remove it. And then if you want it on the traditional side, then you could go ahead and swap it back on there and you're good to go. And we did, this is entirely redesigned from the first generation. So it's uh, much more consistent, much more durable, much more reliable. You can see really clean and really easy. Um, there's a really nice design there on the base that we have for grip to texture that really allow this to kind of sit in space. I'm a little bit over 200 pounds, six foot two, I'm a big guy, and I can push down and this grips really, really well on the table um, because there's actually an entirely new design that we have here to be able to offer good adhesion and bonding um, for the actual surface when you go ahead and mount this. Of course, just like the other mice, you've got adjustable feet. If you wanna be able to have a little bit of a lift, you're good to go. And uh, as I noted before, right, um, there is the USB pass-through. So again, if I want to connect something like my mouse or the wireless receiver, I can connect that and I'm good to go, right? All right. And this unit does also support quick charging. So you can charge the battery very, very quickly within 15 minutes. So let me go ahead and just put that right there. 
just see if there's any questions on the Claymore 2 while this little uh, video loads up here. Hey, happy to have you here, man. Thanks for joining the stream. Very, very cool. So we're just gonna show you a little bit of a kind of closer look here at the ROG RX switches. And keep in mind, as I did note, that you can go ahead and get um, the Claymore 2 now both in the uh, red version, uh, RX reds, as well as in the blue version, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can bring up uh, the links uh, for that model. So give me one second here. And I think I have the uh, the reds and the blues here. So if you guys want to see uh, or hear a little bit of a kind of key, key test, I can go ahead and kind of give you guys a little bit of a um, uh, kind of sound test the difference between the reds and the blues. But definitely one is a more clicky and the other one is kind of that smooth linear experience uh, where I think many people kind of prefer that, but for those that really kind of like that nice clicky experience that you have with blues, then the RX blues really are gonna fill that void. And there you can see the internal design. And this is kind of a critical part to uh, really kind of the cool thing um, with the what we call the X stabilizer, and that's really along with the, the four point stem design allows there to actually be a really, really good experience when you have the uh, what's called that, that minimal force deviation. So wherever you end up hitting that keycap, it feels clean and smooth and consistent and really reduces the likelihood of there being kind of that key chatter and that key wobble. So see, okay, great guys, uh, I found the link here, so I will make sure and include that link for you guys if you guys wanna uh, check out uh, this version, uh, the Claymore 2. And keep in mind that we do have that uh, promo code, so that's ROG10 wireless promo code right now at the ASUS eStore. Um, the Claymore 2 in both either the red or the uh, blue variant is gonna be $269.99. And there you can see the actual stem then. Uh, for those that have been asking about, again, we would definitely have passed feedback over to our headquarters team that for those that are gonna be interested in having um, you know, alternate keycaps, whether they might be maybe like um, you know, translucent keycaps or white keycaps or kind of different options, then we're definitely gonna be evaluating that. And there you can see that um, deviance um, measurement. And that's something that we actually have measured and analyzed uh, compared to a traditional keycap design. That illumination consistency you can see is because of the center mounting of that LED as opposed to the offset mounting of the LED. And this was actually the first model that we did launch that had the RX switches, which was the um, RG Scope RX, which if you want a great uh, keyboard, uh, it's not wireless, but at $129, it's a really great option if you're looking for uh, a model that has that. So let me go ahead and add this uh, to the stream for you guys. Claymore 2 for you guys, give me one second. And then we're gonna jump to this keyboard, which I have right here, which is going to be the uh, Falchion, which is a smaller than TKL based keyboard. There we go. Okay, and just uh, uploading this link for you guys. So give me one second here. Okay, great.
Okay, got the image for you guys right here. There we go. So you guys should be seeing there a link in the stream if you guys want to check out the ROG Claymore 2 uh, wireless. And like I said, you can get it now in the red and the blue variants. So uh, whichever works better for you, you're good to go. So let's uh, go ahead and maybe do a little bit of an audio test if you're interested. So let me see. I think I, I got the two here. All right. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a test. Okay, so we've got the reds here, and we've got the blues here. RGRX reds. Blues. Okay, so here we go. Reds again. Blues. All right, there you guys go. That is the RG Claymore 2 wireless keyboard. Hey, Asus enthusiasts. Uh, so yeah, you actually can check out, we have a full website um, that actually helps you to break down actually some of the key differences in terms of the uh, ROG RX switches compared to traditional switches. Um, also, it gets a little bit more kind of tricky because we're also now launching our ROG NX switches, which are kind of more directly comparable to a traditional um, switch. The ROG RX switches are going to be an optical-based switch. So um, they're actually kind of performance and kind of their be their benefits because of a different design um, because they are not using a traditional mechanical-based uh, design actuation mechanism, right, um, are going to be very different. So in that regard, you know, again, there's kind of a comparable element that one is going to kind of be linear and smooth, although because there's essentially no zero bounce delay that you have, um, debounce delay, you really kind of are really focusing at kind of the premier level of performance and a higher level of reliability. Um, and then it just comes down to whether kind of you want that smooth, soft, linear experience with a red versus kind of the more clicky experience that you're going to have with the blues. But at the same time, if you're also kind of looking towards traditional switches, um, then the RG NX switches that we're going to be offering on a number of different keyboards also could be kind of a, a comparison and contrast for you. The majority of our keyboards, though, um, when we talk about kind of in the rest of our lineup, are using Cherry MX based switches. With some of the models now coming out in the future, will be the new RG NX based uh, switches. But we do have a website that kind of shows you um, kind of the breakdown and differences between kind of actuation, um, reset time, and kind of many of the other variables that you might kind of be interested and kind of getting a sense of. Um, but um, specifically for the ROG Claymore 2, um, the kind of, I would say probably the browns are going to be a little bit kind of closer to the kind of the, the ROG reds, right? Um, and if you kind of prefer, like I said, that clickier experience, then it would be the blues. Okay, so let me go ahead and move these guys here. Okay, all right. Yeah, uh, so that's a great question. So you're actually asking about if um, the keyboards are fast enough for gaming. Every single one of the keyboards that we're talking about are purpose designed for gaming. So you can use them, of course, um, with the absolute lowest latency and the best performance on the USB-C cable connection. But the uh, wireless connection that we're using, the 2.4 gigahertz is gaming grade wireless. So you can 100% game and any type of scenario with those keyboards fully wireless. So you don't have to worry about them. So if you want to go that route, you can definitely go that route as well. So again, that was uh, the Claymore 2 guys. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into the Falchion. So the Falchion is pretty sweet. This is a very compact keyboard right here. This is actually going to even be more compact than a traditional TKL keyboard. So 
Let's go ahead and kind of compare the two here. So you can just see how much bigger they have uh, between a traditional TKL based keyboard and then here uh, with the RG Falchion. So the Falchion, really the goal here was to make something that was super compact for kind of the cleanest, more minimal kind of users, but that also potentially wanted something that they could travel with. This model does support a USB-C connection as well as also offers 2.4 gigahertz wireless. Um, and it has some really cool design points that are on it. So let's go ahead and actually take a closer look at some of the cool design attributes that the Falchion brings kind of to the table here. So. Uh, first thing is going to be, let me turn this off so I don't accidentally uh, shut off the stream there, guys. So uh, the first thing here is you're going to see that it actually comes with this cool top cover. And I'll do some kind of close-up shots here so you guys can actually see this. Um, but the top cover actually allows you to cover that right there. And you then have something that you can put into a bag, or if you kind of want to keep this at your desk, you don't want anything to kind of get into the keys, uh, you just want to keep this really clean and compact, then you do have that cover. It's really clean, really nice. It comes included with it, but you can also remove the cover. And then if you want to actually swap it, you want to put it on the other side, then you can do that. So now this actually becomes a base plate that actually adds to kind of an element of lighting. It still does have a pass through right there so that you have access to the USB-C port, uh, a docking point there for the actual wireless adapter on and off switch there for the wireless. It has an integrated touch bar right here on the side, which you can pretty much customize for all kinds of things for like volume or for different kind of macro fun functions. Um, there is integrated arrow keys, which I love because I love being able to still have access to the arrow keys in here. And you do have hardware level lighting on both profile support is all built in. And this one does utilize standard uh, Cherry MX switches. And we then essentially are having this now in multiple switch variants. So let's uh, take a closer look here at the keyboard. And just for reference, I guess, if you want to see the size difference between against the Claymore 2 and the Falchion. There you go. OK, so let me go ahead and get that lined up right there, guys. Okay, there you can actually, that might be a little bit better for you guys. Very clean, very compact. You can see there is your arrow keys right there. Page up, page down, nice layout. This is traditional Cherry MX switches, so you can customize the keycaps if you do want. As I noted right there, you've got the on and off USB-C port and then the docking point right there. Here's the cover, as I noted right there. So if you wanted to place on the cover, you could put the cover on. Or you have that essentially base, which helps to add some nice under kind of go light lighting to the unit. And there you go. There's the integrated touch bar, which is a really slick design on this model so that you can go ahead and pretty much make like volume adjustment and different types of functions, even though this is a really compact keyboard. One second here, guys. All right. Um, one moment here. All right, and let me just check and see if there's any questions right there, guys. Let's switch that back on there. And this, hey, Michael, thanks for joining the stream. Um, now, this one also comes with a nice uh, USB-C cable right here on the unit. Uh, excuse me, with the Falchion. And this is similar to kind of like what we did with the other kind of the mice where you have uh, 
course, USB-C cable and excuse me, USB-C and then USB type A. Um, and then there's essentially kind of an extension, right? So the extension gives you the flexibility that you could put the wireless adapter and if you wanted essentially better positioning uh, to reduce kind of RF interference or anything like that, you could do that same way that we've talked about in the past with some of the other kind of mice if you want that flexibility. So of course, cable comes present with the unit along with that. So let's uh, go ahead and load up the images here and also go ahead and find the link for you guys. So give me one second. There we go. And we'll load this up for you guys here. And one thing that's really impressive too is that you can have really up to about 450 hours of battery life, which is what we've tested. Of course, that depends on whether you have any RGB lighting, um, turn off the lighting, and kind of also the variation in terms of the lighting presets. Um, but the fact that you have essentially such impressive battery life is really great if you're looking to have flexibility where you're not always kind of connecting this. You want to throw this into a bag, backpack, things along those lines, and then have something to be able to have more flexibility with, let's say, your laptop as opposed to your desktop. It's a really nice unit to be able to have that flexibility with. Here you can see, compact, clean design. This is the base of the unit, right? Adjustable feet. Of course, you also have gripped texture there at the base, reduce any type of slippage. That's the actual uh, cover, which is a top cover and a base cover. Cherry MX switches, which of course, like I said, you can customize the keycaps. You have PBT keycaps here, which are premium, help to kind of resist grime, wear fatigue, oil, uh, things along those lines. USB-C connectivity outside of course the 2.4 gigahertz uh, connectivity. And then of course that optional, um, uh, excuse me, uh, the bay that there that's present for the wireless adapter. And then there's the touchpad. That's correct, yep. 450 hours is the peak rated. Uh, that essentially would be without any type of active uh, lighting. All right, very, very cool. And let me go ahead and get a link up for you guys for this one as well. So give me one second. So again, the ROG Falchion is a 65% and uh, we have it. For, we had it first in the reds. Um, we now have it in the blues, and we'll be having it shortly within the browns. So there's going to be essentially three different switch versions that are available to you uh, for the RG Falchion. So a lot of flexibility there in terms of kind of picking out what you think works kind of best for you in terms of the keyboard um, and kind of the feel that you prefer when it comes to your switches. And there we go. Load that in there goes for you guys. And again, remember, we have that promo code ROG10 Wireless, um, so you can get your uh, promo code discount at the ASUS eStore up right now. So we'll put that in the link for you guys right there. And the, it's the same price whether you're going to get the red version, uh, the blue version, or the brown version coming up. And that promo code is uh, live until the 20th. Okay. Okay, so let me just see if uh, there's any kind of questions right here that we have uh, for the Falchion. If not, we're going to lastly get into our headset, and then we'll be wrapping up the stream, guys. So overall, we've definitely talked a, a huge amount here, um, you know, covering like, uh, our lineup of uh, wireless mice, of course, the two keyboard that we have with the ROG Claymore 2 and also with the Falchion, and now lastly with the ROG Strixgo headsets. And of course, here you can see everything that I've kind of noted on where I've recapped it, where We've talked about that, of course, it's a compact um, keyboard, impressive battery life, quick charging support, the flexibility to customize in the keycaps, but it also comes with durable, high quality PBT keycaps, that touch bar, um, docking point as well for your actual wireless adapter right there, wireless Asus Aura Sync support, um, pretty much like all our modern items right there. So you can fully synchronize this wirelessly or via the wired connection. It's entirely up to you. All right, guys. And so that, again, is the ROG Falchion. All right. Uh, any questions that I see right there? 
All right, very cool. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and wrap things up uh, with, I think, the last item here in the stream. And that is going to be this guy right here. So give me one sec. All right, guys, so this guy right here, it's gonna come in this guy, this box. This little one right here. The ROG Strix Go 2.4. So um, this is the Electro Punk Edition, but we have it actually in a non-Electro Punk Edition. Um, so this pretty much just means that it doesn't have these little kind of uh, uh, Electro Punk pink accents on there. But this is a really nice mouse. Comes with quite a number of different items right here. So... You can see right here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. I love the fact that it has this nice foldable base design. So you can see right there how it just easily goes into this nice included carrying case that you have, which is also a soft uh, soft foam padded uh, case. So it does protect it from any kind of damage or anything along those lines. Then they fold out right there. You can see right there that they do have that nice kind of fold down flat design if you want. These are, are gonna be, um, over ear, but they are kind of close to almost being on ear based headphones right there. Nice range of adjustment where you can go ahead and pull those in and out. They are clearly labeled in terms of right and left. Um, nice composition in terms of the padding materials here, minimal clamp force, but they do have nice balance, right? There you go, we can see. And there you go. Now, the cool thing is that this unit is fully wireless. So it comes included with this good little guy right here. 2.4 gigahertz wireless um, wireless adapter. Now, the cool part to this kind of adapter is that, you know, depending on kind of the devices you're using, you can connect, of course, this 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter directly to your desktop or your laptop. But you could also go ahead and connect it to, let's say, your smartphone, right? So you just have USB-C right there on your smartphone. And now you've got 2.4 gigahertz wireless uh, for your actual phone. Or maybe you've got something like uh, one of these guys right here. I know that, you know, if you're maybe doing some, some gaming, right? Same thing, USB-C. You can go ahead and put that. And you've also got USB-C now. And you've got your 2.4 gigahertz low latency wireless. So I absolutely love um, that flexibility of being able to have um, both options available, excuse me, um, those different levels of options available to me for kind of connectivity. Now, it also has included with it, of course, a charging cable, USB-C for this as well, detachable microphone, right? And the detachable mic, you can see right here. There you go, you can adjust it. Get nice proximity for nice good clarity and tone. The cool part too is that if you do have maybe a higher quality uh, sound card, uh, maybe a DAC and amp that does maybe better processing for audio, um, you also do have an included analog line level connectivity. So you not only have digital um, low latency, 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity, which is great for gaming, for video, uh, for whatever you're doing, for music, you can also do analog. So you can do either or. And if you don't have a USB-C port on your device, there is a, a type A base adapter. So um, let's go ahead and just do a little bit of a closer look here. Okay, guys, so here you can see the headphones. Really nice, clean design. You have that adjustment right there. Nice, clean locks. That padded soft top, right? Lightweight USB-C port right there for uh, the charging. There's the, of course, uh, microphone attachment. There's your analog connection on and off button. Adjustment options right here for volume and for actually uh, adjusting um, the headset as well as the AI noise canceling technology, which is great right here, where you have that button to adjust the ASUS AI noise canceling tech. There's your wired cable, your USB-C wireless adapter, your detachable mic, your charging cable, and then your type A adapter. It's all included right there. And I'll show you here in a little bit of a moment, one of the cool things too is that, um, and here's the, I guess I can show you guys the, there's a nice little cutout for everything. So if you put this in there, 
it all sits inside really nicely. So you don't kind of lose anything. You can see right here, you've got nice little inserts. So you can put that all in there, right? Now, the cool thing, too, is that within the Armory Crate software, you can go ahead and configure these headphones, even when they're actually at the 2.4 gigahertz software. So you can go ahead and adjust things like an EQ. Um, if you want to enable virtual surround, then you can enable virtual surround, even though these are only two channel based headphones. There's a lot of flexibility here. So I'm actually going to show you guys what that looks like here in a moment. So give me a second here. Move this over here. Okay, and we've got that set up, and give me one sec here. All right. And we'll kind of just re-go through some of those images for you guys so you can kind of get a clear sense of it. All right, load in some images for you guys. Going to connect my headset right there. And I'm right now loading the actual uh, software so you guys can actually see what kind of the UI, UI interface looks like. All right, very cool. All right, got that turned on. Very cool. All right, so let me just show you a little bit of closer look here. And this is the non-electropunk version right here. Top, padded. Of course, the foldable base design makes it really easy if you want to be able to travel and, and put it inside the case. The USB-C adapter the microphone which is attachable and does also feature our asus AI noise canceling design which is great because uh, it really helps to clear up the actual microphone especially if you got ambient noise that foldable cup design which is nice and flexible as well so if you want to be able to lay it down and there you got kind of get a little bit shot of kind of uh someone wearing it you can see how lightly these guys kind of compact and fold down very cool all right Okay, so let me jump into actually software so you guys can actually take a look here. All right, guys. So here we're in a, a little bit of the software UI. You can actually see um, the options that you have available to you. So you can see here you've got quite a different range of options in terms of different types of prioritizations that we've tuned specifically. So if you want to have like flat, uh, maybe like a uh, online meeting, so things like Teams, uh, Google Hangouts, Google Meet, you know, Facebook Messenger, uh, you know, gaming, of course, FPS, then you can go ahead and tune things. You can see they have reverb options. You have virtual surround where you can toggle a virtual surround on and off. Full multiband equalizer that's available to you. Additional refinement that you can make in terms of the microphone for noise gate and perfect voice, which are specialized forms of kind of post-processing um, that can help to kind of clear up uh, your actual audio. And you also have, you can see, dedicated bass boost, compressor, and voice clarity. And the, these can actually make some pretty big differences. Uh, you can also see right there the AI noise canceling option. And so that allows you to go ahead and toggle on and off the, uh, the functionality for ASUS AI noise canceling. So the cool thing is that you don't have to use any of those options. Literally, when you just attach the USB-C adapter, if, let's say, again, you were connecting that to your laptop, or if you were connecting it to your phone, you literally could just connect that then from there you just toggle the switch on there's a little led light that'll let you know that it's on you have your on um, your on cup volume adjustment you would put your headphones on and you would be good to go and you would be set so from there all you would need is again to just attach the USB-C adapter but you could attach that again to your desktop your laptop um, or something again like your you know your switch right here, which you can see that I've got right there, and I'm good to go. The thing that I also will find is that audio quality, these are solid. Um, they're not going to have as, let's say, as deep or kind of as extensive, warm, rich bass as, let's say, like kind of the ROG Deltas. 
that we have right here, which also have larger drivers, which they're 50 millimeter drivers as opposed to these being smaller drivers. But I'll say tonality, they're solid, they're clean, they're neutral. They have a little bit of uh, reasonable base extension, good mids and reasonable, I think, um, treble performance. They overall make, I think, a solid headset, especially when you consider that the big benefit that you're gonna have with the 2.4 gigahertz connection is gonna be the stability and the performance that 2.4 gigahertz allows for. Bluetooth is a really good spec, but the challenge that you have with Bluetooth is it's far more susceptible to shared bandwidth constraints. So especially in calls and other kind of scenarios, it might not offer the latency and it also offers a compressed level of bandwidth that doesn't allow for as much data to essentially be sent through, which can actually reduce the overall quality. Um, and some newer codecs, like what I actually we have on an alternate version of this headset with the RG Strix Go BT are helping to resolve technologies like that. But for many, the kind of the key advantage is going to be uh, with 2.4 gigahertz in terms of being a low latency wireless connection. So uh, let me just go ahead and give you guys a link right here to this guy, and um, we'll show you our last um, our last headset for the stream, and we will wrap things up, guys. So if you guys have any other questions, um, feel free and just let me know. All right, so I'm just going to put this in here for you guys so you guys can check out the link. And this model is currently selling for $199.99, uh, in case you guys are wondering. So let me load up that link for you guys. There you go. So that is the RG Strix Go 2.4 wireless. Okay. And like I said, it does come in a couple of different versions in terms of this being uh, the electro punk version and then the standard version. Uh, but they are all essentially have the kind of the same features, function, and design elements that are available to you. And if you do want to find out a little bit more regarding kind of the um, the AI noise canceling, and you want to see a demo of it, if you head over to the product page, you can actually hear an A and B difference. I can tell you it's a substantially noticeable benefit. So definitely if you've got things like fans, ambient noise, people talking, dogs barking, different things kind of going on in the background, it really can pretty much mitigate all those things. And especially also if you've got a mechanical keyboard, it will really do a great job at filtering out any kind of the sounds from a local system. Um, so whether that's kind of like the fans from a system or whether it's kind of your keys getting hammered away at or the clicking of a mouse or anything like that, those all things would be processed out. Hey, uh, hey, Gameaholic, these are not actually planar magnetic. Planar magnetic would generally find in kind of more audiophile, high-end kind of centric headphones. Those would be kind of also closer more towards the headphones that we have with the ROG Delta and the ROG Theta, uh, which also have ESS Sabre DAC and amps built into the actual headphone design. Um, I definitely have quite a number of uh, planar magnetic headphones. A great option. I would say these are not going to be as kind of detailed um, as what you would have in a planar magnetic, but also Generally, um, really nice planar magnetic headphones um, are starting closer off to about like, let's say the $350 to $400 price point. So these at $200 are really kind of more focused towards being a really mobile centric option that's also lightweight. So you can use them, um, you know, when gaming on your laptop or your desktop, you use them on the go with your phone, with your switch, whatever it might be, um, have good quality in terms of the overall audio characteristics, good tonality, reasonable bass. Um, good, you know, I'd say um, a treble performance, um, but it's not necessarily going to, like I said, be as rich or as detailed as you would have with something like the Delta, which has, like I said, a DAC and an amp built into it, um, which offers a higher level of performance, but very solid headset in terms of its overall design. All right, guys. So uh, let me just go ahead and show you guys the last headset uh, for the stream here, and we'll wrap things up. So give me one sec to open this up here. And these are going to look a pretty much similar uh, to this model. And that's going to be that these are the ROG Strix Go BT. And so the main difference that you're going to have with the ROG Strix Go uh, BT is going to be that they are utilizing Bluetooth. And kind of the big uh, benefit that you have with uh, the ROG Strix Go BT is, is that if you're using a newer device, um, so this could be your smartphone or your laptop or desktop that is using a Bluetooth 5.0 or newer based chipset. This actually allows you to run Bluetooth adaptive and Bluetooth adaptive. It can actually adjust the bit rate um, 
based on actually kind of the analysis of the signal to be able to actually offer higher bandwidth and overall better experience. That's the reason why it's the first actually Bluetooth standard which has been uh, supported for high resolution while also supporting low latency. So it can actually be used for gaming and for watching videos so that you don't have sync and sound issues um, and also help to improve battery life and range performance because it can adaptively adjust the actual Bluetooth signal. Um, what some kind of, sometimes people don't realize is that um, a disadvantage with kind of standard or what are called Bluetooth constant codecs is Bluetooth constant codecs um, have the disadvantage that they kind of have to transmit with this singular uh, level of bandwidth requirement. And if there's a disruption or essentially there's an issue with the um, the transmission at that actual bandwidth, then you can actually have disruption or kind of like a um, drop offs or kind of disconnects or kind of garbling of the audio uh, that can happen within Bluetooth. And the adaptive uh, codec specification was specifically designed to not only help to elevate the quality, but also help to mitigate against kind of the um, different types of environmental concerns that you can have commonly with Bluetooth. So let me go ahead and load this one up for you guys as well. This will be the RG Strixgo BT. Um, and this one, again, it's called BT, but it's inherently, it, it, is, it is wireless. And pretty much all the other kind of design benefits that I talked about are going to be present here on this model. Um, the other cool thing that I really do like about this design is that this model does actually have um, an internal microphone as well, which is really cool because it gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of using this unit adaptively. Um, then the other kind of really cool benefit that I think a lot of people are going to like with this model is that if you're kind of on the go more, more so, is that you're going to have um, ac active noise canceling for the headphone along with the microphone. So you get AI noise canceling for both the mic and for essentially the headphone itself. So both. So if you've been a fan of kind of active noise canceling to eliminate kind of environmental sound when you're out and about, whether that's going to be maybe at a coffee shop, maybe you're working out, um, maybe you're walking, you know, maybe you have the opportunity to travel safely, um, then you can take advantage of the Asus AI noise canceling technology that we have built in for the headphone, but you also have the Asus AI noise canceling for the microphone. So under both scenarios, this is kind of the world's first where you're getting our advanced technology for both the headphone and for the microphone. So that's the RG Strix B, uh, Go BT. This one is going to be a little bit more at 250, um, but it will offer you essentially both levels of functionality when I, uh, uh, as I noted in terms of the uh, noise canceling support. And it is important to keep in mind that while it can work with kind of other options, um, the key kind of part to it will be that you do want to make sure that this is supports the Bluetooth uh, 5.0 standard, so you have that adaptive support. So do make sure that you're checking out the specifications. You also have um, quick charging support that's available to you on the RG Strixgo BT, along with up to 45 hours in terms of the battery life, which is quite impressive. Um, the other cool thing too is that it, it, this model, if you do have uh, a good quality sound card, you can also benefit from um, the line level analog connection that this unit has. And so the cool thing about the analog light level connection is that you do have essentially um, a higher level of quality that can be present there. So if you have kind of like a Dankin amp scenario or if you've got one of our motherboards or laptops with improved audio design, then you can go ahead and connect via the analog line level connection. And when you wanna go hard line connection, you can also go ahead and utilize uh, the, the that connection or you can switch over to the Bluetooth. So it's entirely up to you. In terms of the overall kind of adjustment and range of options, those are gonna be very similar to the two. Um, in terms of the ROG Strix Go 2.4 as opposed to the ROG Strix BT. And so you'll find though that while there's a wide number of headphones that are on the market that have Bluetooth, um, there's very few headphones that are utilizing this brand new um, Bluetooth adaptive codec standard. So again, make sure that your device supports that latest generation of Bluetooth 5 to be able to fully benefit from the adaptive technology. Um, beyond that, all those things that I talked about in terms of kind of the easy use, the carrying case, the accessories that come included with the unit, the Asus AI noise canceling for the mic and for the headphones, those are all kind of great options that you'll have built into this unit. All right, guys. So overall, um, that pretty much wraps up uh, everything that we were looking to highlight for this stream. So uh, we've definitely spent a lot to be able to talk about here. We've dived into our kind of entire range of mice, um, keyboards and headsets for wireless for 2021. 
hopefully with this stream, you guys be able to get a good insight um, into kind of what would be a great option for you to be able to upgrade your setup and your experience if you're looking to be able to cut the cord and ultimately be able to have more flexibility um, with a wireless device. And definitely across the board, I think you're going to have a great experience with any one of these. If you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback on any one of these products, feel free to go ahead and drop us a comment, whether on YouTube or whether you're on Facebook. Um, uh, and if you've got more questions, you can also make sure to join us in our PCDIY Facebook group, um, where I'm consistently asking questions. And also make sure to check out our PCDIY weekly streams, where we dive into the latest product announcements, teasers, updates, Q&As, hands-on, and a lot more. So um, hopefully, guys, you found this useful. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to go ahead and uh, let me know. So with that, guys, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day, and make sure to go ahead and take advantage of that promo code RG10 Wireless, which is good until the 20th if you're looking to pick up any one of these items on the ASUS eStore.